You're listening to Creating a Universe, a Love Anarchy podcast hosted by William J. Rogers. On this show, we follow the journey of creatives, artists, and entrepreneurs who are making a name for themselves in the ever-evolving landscape of today's industry. Featuring an insight into both Love Anarchy and the Lavaniverse music universe, as well as the individual projects and stories of each of our guests from the music industry and beyond. So whether you're a budding creative or simply interested in what goes on behind the scenes, this is the podcast for you. Hello and welcome to Creating the Universe. I'm your host, William J. Rogers, and today I am here with metal singer, songwriter, and guitarist, Spike Francis. How's it going, Spike? Hey, well, good to see you, man. Nice yeah, to see you in person, you know? <laughs> yeah, you too, man. We've been, we've been chatting for ages now. I mean, you're a guy that's full of so many cool stories. So, you know, I've been needing to make this happen for a long time, man. I'm, I'm really excited for this. Cool, man. Yeah, it's good to be here. So uh, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, the best way to kick things off is, uh, would you be able to just give a bit of an overview as to who you are and what you're up to? All right. So uh, currently I have my own solo project, which is basically the result of COVID making us have to do everything by ourselves. Um, you know, you couldn't go to studios, you couldn't do, you couldn't even rehearse with band or, or anything. So I was basically stuck in my, you know, bedroom studio and just started coming up with, uh, what became Spike's guitar camp. And, uh, the name of the albums, are you metal? And basically what I do are, are basic 60 second songs. You know, mm -hmm. 60 seconds, 62, you know, they're not right on the money, but it's basically, <laughs> and it's animated. Um, so uh, I basically created an, uh, like a sort of fantasy universe, which is nice. kind of like what you're kind of doing right now, yeah, which kinda, is kind of yeah. cool, you know? <laughs> so you understand, you know, the whole concept. And then I created like a storyline and did 10 videos that all sort of, go from it, it's it's sequential so there's a storyline that's going on mm -hmm. and you know and it's funny because the um i guess the um the overall story is that i was cryogenically frozen in the past and oh. came back to fight the menace which is disco because there was rumors that it was coming back and the reason <laughs> i picked disco is because it's a victimless crime there's nobody left. <laughs> like, you know, if you picked any other group, like maybe hippies or, or whoever, they would come for you. <laughs> you would be yeah, canceled. Yeah, yeah. There's no disco people but, left. So right, I see. it was the perfect. <laughs> and back in the 80s, that was the uh, battle cry was death before disco. That's it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just became a concept. And then it turned into almost like, a you know, do you know Tom and Jerry? The cartoon <laughs> of course yeah yeah well that's basically what it is it's the flying v spaceship chasing the disco ball which is actually like the battle star from <laughs> yeah, you know Star Wars. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know there's all kinds of references to outer space mandalorian stuff in the yeah, first yeah. video my les paul turns into a jet pack and i take off <laughs> off a mountain well my my character yeah <laughs> was, right of was course, it actually yeah. me um <laughs> But yeah, and it's got a storyline, and and I just uh, did it. I'm actually working on a new album now, but um, you know, it's kind of just just a thing that I do, you know, and um, and I yeah, and, and so I'm, cool, man. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy with it because it came out, in my opinion, well, because the reason is I play music or I write music that I want to listen to, like I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, and it's I think it's important to talk about what motivates people to write music. You know, there's so many different things. It's like the carrot and the stick. Like everybody is like, hey, you know, maybe you want to play this kind of music because people like this, mm -hmm. you know? And when you start to do stuff like that, I mean, it's always a hit or miss. You, you know, you don't know, but I would rather fail doing what I want to do yeah. than to succeed doing something totally fake, non -in ingenuous, you know? Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people lose that. And I see it a lot today. Everybody's like trying to figure out what the trend is, what the thing is, and they're trying to write music. And I'm a victim of that myself from my past. And we can get into that later. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think that to be a, an artist and to do stuff, I mean, it sounds ridiculous because I'm like a spaceman trapped flying around a flying <laughs> spaceship chasing disco balls, right? <laughs> yeah, man. It sounds like the live. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Space dust everywhere. Yeah. That's and, it. you know, but, um, <laughs> you know, I just see that a lot. Now, now, you know, a lot of people are always like, hey, man, when are you going to finish that song? 
I'm like, it, it's done. It's, it's finished. Like, <laughs> it's a, it's a whole minute it's, song. It's a chorus yeah, yeah. and a guitar solo. I'm like, who wants to hear anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have somebody hand you a demo tape and the first two minutes are like these drums and then some like keyboard and spatial kind of sounds? And like, it, like by the end of the two minutes, you're like, I can't even listen to this. Where's the song? <laughs> yeah, you man. Know? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm yeah. probably more in that camp of, uh, um, <laughs> you know, like drawing things out too much. But I think you have a good attitude with it, man. And I think in this day and age, that's what people want, right? Like, just get, yeah. get to it. And what's funny is I've always been a big Edgar Allan Poe fan, right? Oh, yeah. And he wrote the philosophy of composition back in the 1800s where... He was saying how he believed people had a very short attention span. This oh, is yeah. this is back then. Like imagine that was true now. then. Yeah, when <laughs> yeah. they were still watching operas. You know what I yeah. mean? Like so yeah. he described how it was much harder to write a short piece that got to the point than a rambling kind of thing, you know? And totally. and so I always had that in my mind and um I, kind of something that I went for, you know? Um Yeah. Yeah, man. That that and it for me like it's harder to write longer songs <laughs> so sure so yeah that. it feels more natural like yeah i guess if you feel like you can wrap something up like you have a complete contained idea within a minute right then yeah that's fantastic yeah, it's just like a, it's Why just not? like a moment in time that you capture mm -hmm. and and it, and it just comes to me from who knows where i mean i'm not you know, I always hear people talking about, well, I was writing this song because I wanted to try and, you know, and it's like, I, and I, I almost feel guilty in a way because I don't try. It just happens. But I think that's the real way, isn't it? Otherwise, it, otherwise it's really just the ego trying to get involved and claim it. You know I what I mean? So. I think that pure creativity does just flow through us, you know? And I take a lot of crap for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as you oh, say, my man... Friends are, my friends are brutal, you know? Yeah, but... And you just, have to, you just have to believe in yourself enough to say, this is who I am, and that's this it. is... And that's, that, that's a big... That's one of the main points I really wanted to get to, is like, I was, a, I was like a mercenary. I also had record deals back in the, in, the, in the 90s, but I was a mercenary. I played for D. Snyder, right? And a lot of my friends were mercenaries. I have my Alice Cooper, um, you, you know, uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, uh, oh, yeah. just all these bands of guys up mountain. I, I know all these guys from Long Island where I grew up. It's an island in the Atlantic Ocean, kind of like you. And, <laughs> you know, only on a you know, further distance. But, man, you know, and it was a great gig, you know, for guys like that could play good and look good and you would get hired. And they would say, hey, man, play this stuff, and you would do it, and you would get paid. And, you know, it was a great gig, but it suppressed the creativity of the individuals. Like, and so sure. yeah. I was lucky because I was in a band called Holy Mother with a guy named Randy Coven. Um, mm -hmm. And we actually got a record deal and went to Europe and toured and did records. And, you know, it was yeah. great, except for the fact that the record company and the publishing companies steal all your money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that was my first foray into writing my own music and having it be somewhat successful, you know. But it was still it was still a situation where you know what it's like to be in a band. You know, you have four or five individuals that yeah. all have a different idea about how mm -hmm. it should go, you know. And you know, you can either work it out or you can fight it out, you know. Or you know, and in the end, it's a compromise on everybody's part. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and so I I don't want to like. Um, I don't want to put that process down because it obviously there's a lot of bands that, that have been very successful with that formula, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but for me now, for the first time, I feel that I'm truly who I am and writing the music that I want to do. Like I write music that I want to hear, mm -hmm. you know? So like, I don't care, if, really don't care if anybody doesn't like it. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a selfish cool. attitude, but like, you know, when I'm up at night working in the studio and I go, man, I, I just want to crank up Are You Metal? And I'll crank it up and be like, I think that's the greatest thing I ever heard. And it might be conceited <laughs> or some kind, you know what I mean? Yeah, We're all narcissists like... in a way. We, we <laughs> love this thing we do because that's why that's we it. do it. Right? You make what you want to hear. That's it, man. Right. 
And it's yeah. like, you know, and, and I've run into like people that have listened to my stuff and said, Hey man, well, you know, if you want people to really listen to it, you got, and I'm like, nah, see, I don't, you know, that's where I, that's where it ends right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm in a completely selfish, self-absorbed fantasy <laughs> world that I've created of my own. Yeah. Yeah. And, I and love it, that man. Yeah. Well, unapologetic. <laughs> what's that? It's unapolo- una- unapologetic. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's just because, um, like I've worked, like when I first started doing Are You Metal, I, I actually worked with a studio guy and his, the whole, the whole first couple of weeks was the guy trying to change everything I did. And I'm like, dude, write your own song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, these guys man. are all the same. I, I've been through it my whole career, you know, playing with bands. It's tough, you know, cause, yeah. cause you don't want to be that guy who's hard to work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but when you have a very strong opinion or a very strong sense of who you are and what your song, what you want your song to sound like, it's difficult, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so there's that, you know, and, and I had the, um, you know, I had the privilege of being in big bands to be able to tour, go to Europe, mm-hmm. do records and everything. And, and right now I'm actually happier than I've ever been. Oh, I'm glad to hear you that. Know? Really cool. Yeah, and it's just like I said, I'm almost like six songs into my next uh, re- record or album, whatever you want to call it. We don't we don't have any physical media anymore, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, that's that's just the way you know it is. And and I mean, I, and I'm mostly known for being a guitar player, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, it's kind of cool to have people recognizing me as a singer now and a songwriter, mm-hmm. you know, because I think there's too many guitar players out there that are just guitar players and they just they don't have any sense of musicality and they, you know not to put anybody down but i i just think people need to realize like you need to be a musician first and then whatever instrument you play you need to incorporate that into your musicality yeah yeah you know? yeah, yeah like dude the guy with the trumpet that, that you had on yeah, they, yeah, John, it was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like yeah. check this guy out he figured out a way to incorporate an instrument you wouldn't normally but that's yeah. what being a musician is. It's being yeah, able yeah. to be you know? an artist. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. It's like creativity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah do you I'm play any instruments besides guitar? I, I try my hand, uh, especially the kind of standard band ones, some keyboards yeah. and, you know, bass and uh, a, a bit of drums, you know. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. A bit of singing as well. Oh, yeah. So, so, you know, I think that... I want... What's ben. that? No, I want that telly. <laughs> <laughs> oh the, yeah, this one you've commented on a few times. Flame top one, yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. guitar, man. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting one. When I, yeah, thanks, man. When I saw it, I was like, "That's just what I'm looking for." <laughs> I nice. always like tellies, but I wanted something that could kind of rock out a bit more, you know? Right. So yeah, it's a good one. But yeah, no, um, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say, man. Like, first of all, it's really cool, man. You've just got like so much cool stuff going on. I love, I love the mentalities that you have. I love the stories that you've had. You, you have this whole richness to you, especially with like, um, yeah, everything that you've kind of done in the past, which is obviously quite a contrast to, um, you know, myself and, and, uh, and other guests. Um, but I'm interested in like, as you kind of mentioned, you've always, you were always a guitarist, right? And then you, d- you played guitar and you did it really well. And you played, you know, you were ripping solos live with like, you know, rubbing shoulders with the biggest rock stars awesome you know that's what i uh, you know like many people are probably like me that's the stuff that we just dreamed of <laughs> as kids yeah. you know yeah but then, like, go on yeah we can we can chat about that <laughs> so like you know the first band i was ever in was this band called hot shot and we actually our managers were nikki six and tommy lee yeah molly crew I, you, you sent you sent me a picture obviously nobody listening to this knows yeah, that but know, yeah you sent me a picture like the- yeah, yeah, and it's so Not cool, like man. <laughs> but, yeah, but you, yeah, you like, and you're all like young guys, and like, yeah, mo- um, well, Nikki Six, Tommy Lee, you're, all, you're all just like, yeah, they were mad. And see, we felt, like, see, we felt victim to the very thing that I have kind of escaped now. I think, even though who's it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not nothing's ever going to become of it, really. But back then, it was the same thing. It was like, well. Well, the record companies were like, well, you guys are a good band, but you sound like Motley Crue. <laughs> you sound yeah. like Skid Row. You sound like Warrant. You sound like all these 80s bands 
And we're going into the 90s now, and we're looking for the Chili Peppers and Faith No More. It was a big uh, change, wasn't it, in rock music? Oh, and and then Nirvana just just put lights lights out. They just put the knockout punch on the 80s, and that was it. And we basically got scuttled because it was too late, the wrong time, and it wasn't, you know, and, and the guys in the band were, you know, you know, we were all guilty of it, you know? It was like, oh, it was the hair days, it was the, the metal party, and uh, yeah, so that's when I decided to go the opposite, because I wasn't really into this, that kind of, like, not that I wasn't into it, but I was more of a metal guy. I've always been more metal, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so that's when we started Holy Mother, and uh, mm-hmm. and got a record deal in, in Europe and uh, wound up going overseas and touring and recording and uh, and, you know, got ripped off by the record companies and the publishing companies. And, yeah, you know, a, you know, as, you know as it most. was at, you know, at the end of the day, it was like, what are we doing this for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? You got to do it. Right. You got the well, you gotta experiences, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Like you got to do it. That's that's a, a richness of life just in itself. OK. Shame that not able to make like a sustainable business out of it like most musicians <laughs> dude i actually world, know but... a guy i know a couple of guys more than a couple of guys that have been doing it since the 80s is still doing it yeah that's, so and that's nice. a certain talent and a certain like maybe luck maybe i don't know i don't know if you can yeah. call it luck or, or it's gotta it's be that... hard work though man like spending that much time out on the road and that it is it is i actually know some guys that are mm-hmm. like hey man you know i'm getting sick of it i bet you know, yeah, yeah, getting sick. Yeah. Touring's tough, man. You know, it's gotta be, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes your leather jacket is your RV. <laughs> you know, That's you just right. like got yeah. it wrapped around you. You're on a floor somewhere. You know, some some chick's house. You know, or or in the in the hotel, and it's just you know, it, yeah. it could be tough on you. You know, um, yeah. especially yeah, yeah. if you have a family. You know, if you have a family and, and, be, and stuff like that, you know, guys, you know, it's hard for them to deal with. I've always been yeah. good in that fact that I've just always been like a renegade. And, you know, <laughs> but these days I don't want to do it. I, I, I do studio work now, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I'm working on like these sound libraries. I think we talked about that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like. It's something I've done in the past. I used to work for a radio station called WDRE on Long Island. And we used to do what's called station IDs, drops, and sweeps. So it was Mm -hmm. basically like you hear the call sign of the, you know, the radio station. And we would do the intros for all the DJs. And they were all all like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. And a guy literally stood there with a stopwatch. And they had to be exact. Like there was no like one second over or what. They had to be exact. And uh, and I think that's kind of where I kind of like sort of morphed into what i'm doing now i yeah the short I sort form. of like yeah yeah because i always liked that because it was quick it's over and you got out you know um yeah i like that i think i think it's really cool and i mean we spoke about this as well a bit privately that um like i think in this day and age like yeah that it becomes the way more and more like since like tiktok has come along especially that's what everybody wants and now i see that even like major artists and stuff like that's how they're doing a lot of stuff but you'll start by just like with a chorus and you just like play your chorus on tiktok or whatever see, and then if people like that then maybe it's worth like fleshing out and releasing a full song but otherwise it's just yeah see, that. and that's what's so funny is that when i when i you know i actually took a long hiatus a really long one. I, you know, I, I, I think I retired from the music business in 1999. Mm-hmm. And then from two years ago, I started playing again. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what a plug-in was. I feel like, <laughs> right, I felt like, uh, I lost change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I felt like Johnny Lawrence from Cobra Kai. Wow. Yeah. yeah Have yeah. you ever watched Cobra Kai? I, I, that's the karate kid. Like but, spin-off yeah. on, and so it? Johnny yeah, yeah. Lawrence is the guy who like disappeared for years. And when he comes back, he has no <laughs> idea what computers are yeah, there or you go. cell that's phones. You, yeah. <laughs> no, it's in 99. Like, yeah. Wow. And I kind Everything of felt like that. Man. I was like, I was like, what's a door? Like, where's my yeah. four track? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wound up building a studio. And, uh, and I started doing these 60 second songs. I was calling it middle met minute metal in the beginning. Oh yeah. That was the first title. It was going to be like an instrumental. Cause I didn't know what to do. I was like, 
I mean, because you got to realize, like, I was endorsed by Gem Guitars back in the 80s and 90s, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was the same company that Steve I was on. Yeah. And if you yeah. look on my page, you'll see there's a catalog with me and Vibe signed Man, it's to so sign. cool. It's so cool. You just, like, in the catalog, like, like yeah, rock style <laughs> I, with the I, I Gem snuck in there guitar. somehow. Somehow yeah, I yeah, weaseled yeah. my way into there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who let good. me in. I must have snuck <laughs> in like through the back, you know? And, yeah. but you know, so like I was, I was like, you know, my last sort of um, awareness of guitar playing was like guys like Joe Satriani and Vi and all yeah. these guys uh, that, that who played guitar. So I was like, yeah, maybe I'll do something like that. So I started doing it. And then actually all those tracks became the um, tracks if you watch my YouTube channel, I do intros to every video where I'm mm -hmm. like this in character. And all those tracks wound up being the background tracks for the rants. Right. Yeah, and I had cool. no idea about Instagram, you know, or anything. <laughs> sure, yeah. And then when I started, like people started telling me, hey, man, you should go on TikTok and Instagram. And they were like 60 minutes. I was like, that's right up my alley. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so... And now I think Instagram's 90 seconds, right? It goes up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and, that, and, that, and I'm mad about that because... <laughs> I think a lot of my, still the shorter the better, really, I think. But the thing is, some of my clips are like 63 seconds. Oh, so you can get them in. We yeah, had a yeah. cut. We had to cut them and figure out where are we going to cut? Are we going to cut the beginning three seconds? Yeah, yeah, Or the yeah, last? Yeah. And dude, when you do animation, it costs you in seconds. Yeah, man. For, I'm telling you, it's, I mean, it's that's another thing I wanted to speak about that more as well, just in like relation to your music, because obviously people that might not have heard it yet, like you, you did briefly mention that you have animation, but you've essentially created kind of like a, a little mini web series, yeah. basically. Yeah. And so, yeah, you have like a clip, like the one minute metal song type thing, as you say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like this short form episodic thing where it's just all this crazy stuff going on. And it's oh, all yeah. been animated, which, as you say, is expensive and like quite, yeah, it's uh, it's quite a hell of a process. And I'll tell you what, the guy, the guy that did the animation is on Instagram also. He's Elf from Space. Yeah. And <laughs> dude is, it's a very suitable named, name, isn't it? <laughs> dude, we, we were totally made for each other. Yeah, and I, met him on a, I met him on a site called Freelancer. All right, cool. Yeah. I was just looking, man. And I'll tell you what, you know, I found this guy and he's a total metal guy. That's it. Very, very talented guy. And we wound up meeting and, and it was like, hey, man, I'm into this. And it just kind of fell together. And uh, he did a great job. You know, he really did yeah. a good job. And I wish we could have continued doing it. But um, it just wasn't after we did the 10 songs and whatever. I was just like, I, I really don't have that kind of money anymore to keep, yeah. you know, Keep doing it. I mean, if somebody yeah. were to maybe pick it up or something, I mean, I mean, really, you know, I mean, that would be like for me the because I really got into that. Yeah, yeah like yeah, it, yeah, like sure. you know what it's like working with that. Like you start getting into it and you go, hey man, this is something I might really want to get into. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I just had a brief glimpse of it. You know, so it's like. You know, who knows? Maybe one day somebody will discover it and go, hey, man, I like this stuff. Let's do some more, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you can only hope. Where, where you're at now is that, so you, you did, you did, is it, was it 10 tracks? Like, Ten, what, yeah. like these kind of short clips, uh, yeah. short tracks. And then you put that into an album, which is almost like your first season. Right. Almost. Right. right? So on, so on Bandcamp, my album's for sale. Mm -hmm. and uh and it's great because it's all 10 songs in the you know same place the band camp's cool because like i don't even want to promote it for people to buy i think music <laughs> should be free a lot of people are going to hate me for this right <laughs> but i really do i really think we should just be able to make music and put it out there and have people listen to it and yeah, I, th I like that as well yeah i think that <laughs> as you say people can focus on the negatives a lot but especially as a listener i love being able to just have everything on demand you know yeah no I restrictions mean, yeah. Right. I mean, if I'm going to listen to music, I go on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything. You just but listen a, to me. As an artist as well, like it is nice just for people to listen. You know what I mean? Even right. without earning from it. Like that's the first thing that you want is people just to listen to it. Right. So make it as accessible as possible. Right.
And I like Bandcamp because they'll let you listen to each song three times before they make you buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so you can yeah, listen to the cool. whole album and you don't have to buy it, you know? And yeah, if you yeah. really like it, buy it. I've sold a couple of albums, actually. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. And, you know, and it, it, that's cool. I mean, but that's not why I do it. I mean, I really just do it because I love to do it. And I'm inspired to create this world that I've done. Yeah. The thing, the thing that's got me, I, I guess, in the uh, the thing that's got me right now is what do I do going forward? Yeah, you so know, you're I, continuing I you some music. Track. You mentioned yeah, that I you're working you... on tracks. Yeah, yeah. But... What's that? So, so you're still working on music, obviously. You mentioned that you've got a load of oh, material yeah. there. Yeah, but... I sent you a Symphonic Superstar, the, the new yeah. title track, right? That's right, yeah and, yeah. and yeah, and like I said, it's hard to decide how to go. Do I shoot my own videos? Uh-huh. I so don't know yet. It's See, the, the animation, animation thing. Yeah, you're dropping the animation just for budget reasons, basically, at this stage. You know, and like I said, we've been watching, I sent you some clips of some other artists that have been doing some new AI stuff that, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I might look towards that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to do something like that. But um, I don't know. Like, um, you know, I, I just, like I said, my, my main message is that you have to know who you are. Mm. You know, I, I never understood who I was back in the days when I was getting paid to play and touring and, you know, even recording and writing albums with a group of people, you tend to get caught into that group mentality and not really understand who you are as an artist, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it really comes down to, you really have to kind of go inside yourself and just channel you, know, you have to just channel the, the music that's coming into your head. Like, um, you know, you're a songwriter, so you understand when I tell you that sometimes a song comes to you and it won't leave you alone. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself singing it in your mind while you're like, you know, cooking or out somewhere or whatever. You're like, wow, that song is just haunting me, you know, and you have to record it. And so... That's what I do. I just channel it and, and I do what I want to do. And I don't have any regards for like, you know, what's popular, what people are listening yeah, to. It just one. doesn't yeah. matter. Mm -hmm. And I really believe too that, you know, um, I believe that music, like, you know how different styles come and go, you know, mm -hmm. like the eighties, all of a sudden, like rock was back, you know, and metal kind of rock hair. But it's like, I think that what brings a, 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 a genre of music back is a band or, or, or an artist that writes really good songs in that genre. Yeah. It's all about the songs, right? At the end. Of the it day. really is mm -hmm. like, like a really good song could be a metal song. It could be a country song, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a rap song. It could be any like genre that a person wishes to make it but if the song is solid it's mm -hmm. going to survive every single you know yeah the iteration genre yeah. that that a it's done that's universal. a real song yeah, yeah yeah i like that really like that man so, so how did you find then the learning curve of like you were always a guitarist but then you've come back in and now we're in this age where like most of us, we have to wear a lot of hats, right? And so now you're playing all the instruments and programming stuff. You're recording using a door and all this digital stuff, the plugins and et cetera. How did you find like getting into all of that? I had a friend at Sweetwater. Oh, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, the kid is great, man. He knows everything about everything. Cool. Turn me on to the latest stuff. You know, like I said, I'm like, what's a plugin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about here? And yeah, I, I literally became a studio engineer, a writer, a singer. Like nobody ever really let me sing on albums before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it was a, it. The learning curve was severe. But I, I, mm. I, um, I put myself into it, you know, I really yeah. put myself into it. And uh, what's funny is that the way that uh, Spike's Guitar Camp was born mm -hmm. was I was, um, well, the whole reason I started playing again, I'll, I'll get back to start it so you can edit. Um, the whole reason I started Spike's Guitar Camp was um, I had a loved one who passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, I hadn't played in years. I mean, I, I basically retired. I said, that's it. I'm not playing anymore. I can't put up with this anymore. And um, 
And when, when she passed away, I was like, you know what? I, I, I got to, I, that's what happens in the end, right? That's what happens. And you're gone. And, and so I was like, you know what? I always wanted a custom Les Paul, <laughs> a good one. Because I've had yeah. crappy ones. Oh, I was endorsed yeah. by Gem Guitars for years and years, so I couldn't play any other guitars. But right. prior to that, I had had some Les Pauls. I had a Special, had a Deluxe. I had all these yeah, like kind the of crappy ones. Just the, that's the yeah, one. I was just never happy with them. And I said, you know what? So I wound up ordering a custom Les Paul mm. in white yeah, that's from Gibson. One. Really f- freaking expensive. Yeah, <laughs> man. But it's the greatest guitar I've ever played in my life. Those are so good. The Gibson Les Paul customs, especially the white ones. I love them, man. Always. And it's, always love and them. it's non-chambered. Well, I'm going to start talking Spike's guitar camp. Yeah. Tech's no <laughs> stuff now. It's non-chambered. So it's, it's got a real one. ebony yeah, fretboard. Yeah, yeah. It's got the, you know, the T-top pickups. It's got everything. Is that everything an old one then? Is that a, like an old model or, or? No, it's brand new. Brand but new, they, but... They, it's a run of like 200 through, through the custom more shop. Classic, more classic kind of. Build. And it's unbelievable. It's mm-hmm. absolutely unbelievable. So I, so I get this guitar, I start playing, and I'm seeing this girl at the time. And, uh, you know, she's like a regular girl, and I'm crazy. So it's like a hard <laughs> thing to, you know, come to terms with. And, uh, you know, one day she doesn't come over, and I call her, and I say, I say, hey, what are you doing? She's like, you know, I have responsibilities. I don't have all day to hang out in guitar camp. <laughs> and I just, I just burst out laughing. And from that day yeah. on, it was always known as guitar camp. Oh, that's where, it, uh, wow, the name came from there. That's yeah, perfect. so she could sue me or it. something. If I ever become famous, maybe she's going to want like some kind of royalties or something. I don't know. <laughs> like every other um, girl I ever, like I was married. They took, you know, they just take all your shit. I'm sorry. I said, I shouldn't say that. That's um, all right, man. <laughs> but yeah, so so that's how Spike's Guitar Camp was born, you know, because of, a, of a, a facetious kind of comment that was made. <laughs> so, you know, but, but, it, but then I started... Um, you know, I just started writing and I don't know how it started. I, I just started doing it, you know, yeah, cool. and uh, little by little song after song. And then I started getting worried, like, well, what's going to happen if I can't come up with something else? You know, I mean, do you ever come do you ever come across that? where you are like, Hey, I just finished this project. Like, what am I going to work on now? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, almost uh, like a little kind of void that opens. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and, and you don't want to like force it. Like we were saying before, like you don't want to go, Hey man, I got to write a song. Who can I write about? And you look and you see the milk carton on the table, milk in the <laughs> cart, you know, you know, some stupid stuff. That's going to totally be crap. You know? <laughs> nice. Milk in the so, yeah. But I'll tell you, yeah, I've been, I've been lucky like that or fortunate rather that, uh, I got, I have a lot of songs in the queue right now, you know, that's great. And now I'm getting to the point where I don't know how to expand it, you know, how to, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a hard thing to come to terms with, to figure out how you're going to get it out there to the people, you know? That's a lot of the game these days, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's hard work. Like, there's a, yeah. there's a lot of noise to cut through, so, yeah. What's that? There's a hell of a lot of noise to cut through, you know, to, to, to get yourself noticed these days. I know, sure. I know. You know, I see these young guys, uh, you know, and, and I, it's like, um, and you know, you're friends with a lot of the same people I am on, on IG. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these guys are really talented guys in there in their yeah, bedroom yeah. studios and they're playing some great stuff, you know, and they don't have that experience to be out there and to be playing. And it's, yeah. um, it's something you have to do when you're young because uh, this is my thing. Like, make it happen when you're young so you don't wind up in a freaking flying V rocket ship chasing <laughs> disco balls across the universe. All right. So I have to go. say to you kids. All right? <laughs> you heard it here, man. Yeah. Like this guy would know what he's talking about. <laughs> I love it, man. But I love, I mean, I, I mean, we, I said it off, uh, when we started, obviously, but before we started recording, but like, uh, as far as anybody else is concerned, we've been ignoring it, but like this setup that you got going, man, like I was not <laughs> expecting to be talking to you from the cockpit of the flying V spaceship. You the know, Icarus. I love it. The Icarus. Very un, very I unoriginal. The yeah, Icarus. I love it. I love it, man. Yeah, dude, it looks so cool, man. I, I'm, I'm well happy about that. It's going to look great on the, uh, the Instagram feed, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Man, you know, 
Um, yeah, this is how I did all the videos. I have a green yeah. screen bef- behind me. My whole back wall is a big green screen. Yeah, okay. And I, I did all the um, video takes um, and then sent them to Juan and he did this, you know, and then he sent me this so that I could do it yourself prior Wicked. to the green screen. Nice. You know? Yeah, I mean, obviously I saw them in the videos, as I mentioned, but like, yeah, to, to have it live like here on the Zoom cool <laughs> that's an extra want, special treat. what i really want is i want the disco ball that's to go a, flying like, across the that, back screens yeah, like obviously peri- periodically gonna, just yeah <laughs> see, i'm a i'm a dummy right because it, originally i was like yo one we should have the disco ball flying across and then the flying v chasing after and he's like dude <laughs> he's like the dude. Flying v. He, goes, he goes dude you're in the flying v how can you go that's like I'm an idiot. That's why I got you. That's it. These are, uh, yeah, Spike's guitar camp problems. <laughs> yeah, wicked, man. And so what about like like the makeup and stuff? It's a really awesome look, I think. You, All right, so, you also mentioned so that's a good, me. good Go point yeah, yeah. that you bring up because I've always been a Kiss fan. Everybody wants yeah, to be yeah, Paul yeah. Stanley or, yeah, or Ace Frehley, right? You know, Kiss was always a major part of my influence growing up. Yeah. King Diamond was another guy. Yeah. Um, I've always been into that kind of stuff. And uh, so I started looking up uh, face paint. Like I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to try and get into it. So I, what I really came across that was interesting was that the American Indians actually mm-hmm. were wearing war paint at, while the Vikings and the Brits, were, the Celts, right, were, mm-hmm. were also wearing some form of paint. Yeah. And it's kind of a weird thing to think that, well, you know, everybody talks about how the Vikings were these seafaring people and that they went to North America. Mm-hmm. So it's like, did the Indians have it before them? Did it happen at the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually based this kind of thing off of an Indian painting that I found mm-hmm. and yeah, just kind of modified one. it a little bit, but you know, in the end it's all kiss, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah, you, yeah, know yeah. you can't escape. Cause that's the thing. Like, you know, that's the thing I want to talk about is influences. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So as a guitar player, I grew up listening to Jeff Beck, Jimmy page. Yeah. Then it became Angus young. Then it became Michael Shanker. Then it became Randy Rhodes. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. And you know, and and KK Downing. Like I, I saw Judas Priest open for Kiss, mm-hmm. and and that that the world changed at in that moment, you know, because nice. I was always like a blues based rock player, and discovered heavy metal, like real heavy metal, you know, yeah, and it yeah. just blew me away. So the thing that it, the the thing is is that we all have our influences. Like so, if you listen to like say maybe five different guitar players and I listen to maybe one, one or two of the same, right? Mm -hmm. Your, your um, combination of your influences is different than my combination. And we will sound a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, well, I got this new sound. And it's like, well, you just like kind of melted your influences into that sound. And within that sound, I can still hear those guys. Yeah, yeah, now, everybody yeah. wants to be original. They want to be like, oh, this is my own sound, you know, and maybe some guys did like Jimi Hendrix, like Eddie yeah. Van Halen, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Randy Rhodes, like like the icons, the people who really changed yeah, the face of music. Yeah. You know, I'm not that guy. You know, none of us are right. There's, those guys are one in a million, you know, uh, have more. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, I like to think the things that I'm doing are original and they're new. But you can reverse engineer it and go, hey, man, you know, this was doing that. King Diamond was doing that, you know. Yeah. Um, and now there's like, uh, you know, Slipknot. <laughs> like, dude, A those guys thing, could just yeah. change members and nobody would know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, fair. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? it's, it's different because, as you say, especially, especially the classic stuff, like there is a lot of character in the playing right oh I mean, it's definitely uh, definitely anything that's come from the blues right the blues classic rock stuff like it's it's so much about feel and that kind of raw yeah. energy but the classic metal as well still very much contains that whilst also being a lot harder yeah, you so, see, you guys were the, the masters of that. The English were just like, <laughs> you know, just, I mean, really, I mean, we had what we call the English invasion, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and even before that, guys like Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck were like, you know, 
you guys didn't even want to listen to the blues. So they imported the albums to England. Those guys listened to it. They created their own version of it. Yeah, and then yeah. exported Sold it, back it back to America. To America. <laughs> exactly. And, and then Americans were like, hang on, <laughs> we got something here. Yeah. Yeah. But and, then and next generation, then you had like a pretty insane wave of American bands though. Like follow. Well, that. it was the LA. It was kind of like the LA explosion. It was like, uh, yeah, you know, so you had the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there, you had like a load of kind of AOR type bands as well in the seventies. Like there's some really fantastic yeah. bands there in, in that classic rock kind of stuff and things like Boston and, you know, stuff that's just like such great, classic rock oh, you know did you just say boston yeah yeah, yeah. greatest band of all time man. Nice. <laughs> my favorite yeah, boston nice. thing is the tom schultz pick scrape <laughs> the like the pick scrape that he has on his but he just goes oh, with the oh, pick. Boston. oh just yeah it, oh yeah like, man that's tone yeah it's perfect man People take that for granted. They think a pick scrape is easy to do. Man, I love it's... pick scrapes. Like I used to, do, I used to when I was playing in a band, I was pick scraping all the time. I just love how like how much attitude there is. And then when we went to record the songs and we were working with a producer, he cut out every pick scrape, and he oh. was always like, he was like, ah, like he didn't like listening to it. And I was like, but it's the pick scrape, man. Like it has to be there. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, that's like a old thing i'm like there's, there's two nah. there's two major there's two major um guitar tones that uh, i always recognize it's the tom schultz pick scrape yeah. and the zach wild squeal oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, certain guys come out with a certain thing that they do that like maybe other guys maybe overlook you know those are little signatures aren't they but then like yeah. kind of kind of like you said about the eddie van halen's or whatever like you know, Zach Wilde kind of really came out with that, but then that got incorporated into a lot of people's playing, right? Right. Was, yeah, and it's been know. around forever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, sure. And I, and I actually just, just watched it sounds the... so beefy and juicy when Zach Wilde does I, it, man. <laughs> you know, I just watched a Zach Wilde interview, and he was like basically going through all his songs, saying what songs they actually were before, <laughs> which I thought maybe a bit of bit a little too gratuitous you know like you know maybe overthinking it a little bit uh -huh. you know because i mean as a writer when you write stuff things are going to happen you have to accept it you know you don't want it can't be a ripoff yeah but course, if it's yeah. influence if it's an influence i mean it's it's really an homage or a homage i don't yeah. know how you say the word <laughs> um it's really an homage to the original artist Sometimes, sure. yeah, and I don't yeah. know if you if you ever saw this, but sometimes, like when I watch Stevie Ray Vaughan play Hendrix, mm -hmm. I realize how great Hendrix is. Yeah, yeah, that he has such a clear style. Like you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, Does yeah. that make any sense? It like, does. yeah, I'm with you. Like when you watch somebody um, do a cover of somebody and they do it really well, you realize how good the original artist was. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So you know, th there's all these things. I mean. I just try to try to, I don't, you know, I say I try, but I don't really try. I, I just try. What I try to do is to channel, Yeah. you know, um, That's and it, to just yeah. be able to play freely it. and to just play. And, you know, every once in a while, you play something and you listen to it and you say, oh man, that sounds too much like this song. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have to come to a decision. Am I going to, am I going to keep it or am I going to scuttle it? Because the last thing you want is for people. And I, and I, you know, it's such a, such a hypocritical thought process, right? I don't yeah. care what people think. I want to play my own stuff, but yet I don't want people to say, Hey man, you sound like this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it's, it's, I do think though, I, I do think you have like a, a fairly unique sound actually, because I remember when I first listened to it, I kind of listened to it a bunch and I remembered first saying like, Oh yeah, it kind of reminds me of this and this. And then listen more and thought, actually, I'm getting something completely different from it now. It's right. pretty cool. You know, I mean, yeah. how, how would you, I know this is, a, this is a thing that musicians hate doing, but how would you describe your sound and what influences and stuff you think? I mean, I'm a product of Boston, Randy Rhodes, Sabbath, Judas Priest, you know. Uh, Classic you know, metal. Well, yeah, I'm a clay. Yeah, you actually asked me that a while back. You're like, hey, man, are you into new metal? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Like, what, what's new metal? <laughs> like, I like Disturbed. Disturbed is one of my favorite bands. And I That's think cool. I've seen that they are described as new metal. Hmm. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, they are. 
Yeah, I think they are kind of, yeah, new metal adjacent at least. <laughs> yeah, what, what I liked about them was their, like, they got better. Like, a lot of bands come out with their first couple albums. You know, you have your whole life to write your first album. Mm-hmm. You only have a year to write your second one, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of bands may, maybe have a first and second album that's really good, and then they go downhill. Those mm-hmm. guys got better and better. The Asylum album has got to be one of my favorite albums. Nice. I think what, and, and you know... What's cool about Disturbed, though, is that they also have that kind of theatrical thing going on. Like, I, what always drew me to Disturbed is that character that they have. Yes. You know, and, and that stuff is always just super cool, I think. I, I, and I think that's what I'm attracted to, you know. I, and plus, it's got to be heavy. And those guys are super heavy. Mm-hmm. But what's funny is, and a lot of my friends say, they're like, dude, the bands you're into don't, don't really have, like, these great guitar player guys. Right, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I'm not like, you know, like there are guys who will only watch a band to see the lead guitar player for that one mm-hmm. minute doing arpeggios and sweeping and, you know, <laughs> De- all the theatric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? <laughs> a demonstration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Guitar and workshop. so like, and I'm into like, you know, Corey Taylor is like one of my favorite singers oh, in the world. A, yeah, he's great. And the energy as well, man, that he has and, as well and, as and, the voice. And, and Stone Sour is a great band, mm-hmm. and you know those guys are good. They're 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 very good guitar players, but they're not, you know, solo guys. They're not like yeah. these like you know virtuoso guitar player guys. Um, yeah. Shine Down is another band I was always into, and he's a sort of not I mean Tremonti, really metal he's a, guys. He's a brilliant guitarist, isn't he, Tremonti? But again, is like often downplaying. Like, you know, he's right. especially in, yeah, in Alter Bridge, I think maybe he gets a oh, bit more yeah. leeway. But yeah, I mean, but you're right. It's like in New Metal, early 2000s, things like that. Like, yeah, I think the lead guitar and stuff, like, it got dialed back a lot already in the 90s, I guess. But like, definitely 2000s, it, it well, ceased see- to become the age of the guitarist, you know, I think. <laughs> Did you ever see the Metallica movie? Yeah, the the some so, kind of monster one. The, yeah, so oh, Kirk man. Hammett. Kirk <laughs> oh Hammett no, says solos. The, yes, <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. He says the greatest man. thing of all time. He goes, they're like, oh man, you know, if you play these solos, you're dating us back to the thing. He goes, no, if I don't play solos, I'm dating us to now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I remember that. It's hilarious because they're, they're basically saying how, yeah, it's not cool to play solos anymore. We need no solos. But then, like, what's, what's Kirk Hammett even meant to do? Like, does it, it, like, as far as I know, James Hetfield plays, like, all of the rhythm guitars on the Metallica amazing. records. He you is know, amazing. Those guys amaze yeah. me because cause how do you play guitar and sing at the same time like that? Yeah, like that. And but well, I mean phenomenal. And, and still as well, you spoke about musicians that are like are still touring and stuff. Jesus, man, Metallica have been at the top for a long, long time, man. And they still just maintain such a level of professionalism. That that's insane, man. Thing is, is is once you're in the business and that's how you make your living, yeah. There's no way out. Look at the Rolling Stones. Like every <laughs> oh, yeah. band Right, the Rolling Stones, Kiss, all these bands. They go, "This is our last tour. Yeah. We're never gonna play again." And then two years yeah. later, they're out of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they go back out on tour. Oh man, Motley Crue was such a ridiculous one with that man. Like I remember watching this live stream publicity event of them signing these contracts. We're never gonna play ever again and i was like this is total bullshit man (laughs) (laughs) just wait for the you know it's all just pr for when they fancy doing another tour and lo and behold i know know, i don't know about in the states but i remember that before motley crew like retired they were playing like second stage download festival and like they do all this like pr have a holiday, come back, and now it's Stadium World Tour, you know? <laughs> uh, the movie helped a lot. The uh, Netflix the dirt. thing. The best, yeah, yeah. Line, the best line in the movie was when the Mick Mars character, who's actually Bolton from Game of from Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes, so Tommy, the Tommy Lee guy who's, you know, Machine Gun Kelly goes, yeah. uh, he goes, hey man, I used to be in this band. I forget the name of the band. He goes, ah, you guys sucked. He goes, how do you know we sucked? He goes, crappy name crappy name crappy band he goes how do you know he goes i've been in a million crappy bands with the crappy name 
<laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so it's yeah, it's crazy, man. And um, you know, and that's the thing though. But if you've established yourself as an artist and a band that's making so much money, I mean, how do you? It's hard to give it up. It's the touring, guys, especially. You know, yeah. If that, if the touring is how you make your money, and therefore you don't tour, and your money is going to dry up. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be tough, man. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? So, I mean, uh, you know, and, and and it's so far past where I'm, what I'm doing. You know, I'm just a yeah. guy just playing crappy animation videos. No, <laughs> but I have fun doing it. That's Dude, it. it's fun. That's what it's about, man. And it's a yeah. lot more. You can be a lot more grounded that way. You know, like a lot more in control of your life, I suppose, because that's kind of what you're saying that once that roller coaster gets going, like, yeah, you're kind of stuck. You kind of lose control. You have to just keep going round, you know? Your life is not your own anymore. Right? And I mean, that's got to be rough. Uh, you know, for all the glamour and everything that we see on the outside, like, that's got to be a tough life for anyone, man. And yes, I, it is. You know, I think that the fact that the internet has opened up new possibilities is only a good thing, I think, for that. Yeah, you know? I believe so. When I, when yeah. I was younger, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you feel. I, I'm assuming you feel kind of similar now, but when I was younger, I definitely dreamt of like, oh yeah, I want to, I would love to tour the world and be a rock star like that. Um, but then definitely, as I've actually, you know, got older, and especially now that I have a family and things, like. Man, I I would be very apprehensive about doing that at all. I would I'm much more comfortable being at home, being able to chat with you like this now. We can hang out, we can make our own projects, music. It's cool, man. It's a lot more freeing, I think. Dude, I, I have guys from my past who I've played with who have now found me because I'm doing nice. Spike's guitar camp and Next thing you know, I got guys, they want me to go out. They want me to play. And I'm like, dude, I'm not oh, leaving really? my house. Yeah, yeah. And I hate that. I hate to like um, uh, put that out there to people, whatever. But yeah, yeah I'm not yeah. leaving my guitar camp. That's which it. Which is actually my Flying V rocket ship traveling <laughs> through the universe, <laughs> hunting disco balls. That's it, man. Who, who would want to give that up? <laughs> and, I, and I say balls in a very non- <laughs> uh, man. I love it. I love. I love how how wacky the cartoons are, man. You're just like th throwing everything in there, and and like I, I just love that kind of stuff, man. I mean, what what what? It's got a mixed match of everything. But what 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 kind of influences do you have when it comes to the whole kind of story and the? You know, what, I've always been a literary guy. I've always read a lot. You know, Marcus Aurelius. Um, oh, yeah. Edgar Allan Poe, uh, you know, Stephen yeah. King, uh, like I've always been to horror movies and, and stuff yeah. like that. And it, um, you know, it definitely influences like, you know, what you do and how, what you perceive to be cool or, or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And so you don't ever like, I mean, look at me, right? Like, you know, I'm in kiss or I'm in King diamond or I'm in, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like, you know, all right. You know, whatever. But you know what? And the guy, a guy that I never knew existed that I just discovered when I started playing again was John Five. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. And I was just like, mm -hmm. who's this guy? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and I find out he's the guitar player for uh, Rob Zombie and, and, and oh, Marilyn now Manson. Crew. <laughs> now he's in Molly Crew. Yeah, yeah. And he's got his own band where he's in White Face also. And he's got like yeah, this, yeah. dude, he, he has this like blinking LED in his mouth while he's playing. <laughs> it's, and, He's flawless. He's an insane he's, player, man. He's, yeah, he's, he's really he's good. A, he's an know? alien. <laughs> I know. And, and you know, and, and that's the whole thing, man. I, you know, but he's a guitar player. You yeah. know what I mean? He's a guy Definitely. who plays guitar. Yeah. 27. And uh, have you ever seen uh, Tim Henson from Polyphia? I was curious if, if you were familiar with that kind of music and what you thought about that kind of stuff. Oh, actually. I just I just ordered his, um, his nylon string. <laughs> oh, you ordered it? That's an interesting oh, it's looking guitar. It's the most back-ordered guitar in history. Is it? Wow. Yeah, yeah I might see really it next year. <laughs> I see. So what do you think but of I, players like Tim Henson and this really kind of modern style of playing then? Well, I mean, you know, it's hard because in public, it's hard to discuss what you really feel. <laughs> I, listen, the guy's he's non-human. 
you know, yeah, it's something you watch him play that. and you go, he's not a human being. Like nobody <laughs> can play like that, but it comes down to, do you want to listen to that kind of music or not? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not yeah. going to say whether or not I like that kind of music. I mean, I'm a metal guy, you know, so, yeah, but yeah. you know, he was actually a, a metal core guy originally. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's phenomenal. It, it, you couldn't, you couldn't stand toe to toe with a guy like that. I, I don't know how people can be that talented. You would, know? would you try, have you tried at all playing anything like that? All of this kind of, it's no, just like a I'm different not capable, style. <laughs> not capable of it. It's just beyond my understanding. Like yeah. that's how that's how amazing he a guy like that is. It, same yeah, yeah. thing with that like Tobin Abasi guy. To Tosin, yeah, Tosin Abasi. He's insane. It's man. beyond your understanding. It's like, what do you play? Like I don't even understand it. The thing is, I I remember even when I was younger, it was always like the idea of seven strings and then eight strings was very like strange territory because it's like okay, we're getting away from the classic idea of a guitar now. But then players like these guys have come along and they're just playing the instrument in a completely different way. <laughs> you know, I mean, so yeah, he has a good story about that <laughs> being a gem guitar in Dorsey. Right. Well, it was the first ever seven string. Was it Steve Vai and, and the guitar. So, so gem guitars was owned by a guy named Joe Despagny. Okay. And him and Steve were really good friends. And Joe was like a motorcycle guy, and he wound up building Steve's first flame guitar, the flame guitar. Nice. He, he, he wound up doing that and the green cheese or whatever. And then him and Steve developed that seven string that they sold to Ibanez. Nice. But, you know, here's how, like, you know, I mean, I'm a kid, and, and, and I'm like, and he's like, yeah, we, we just did this seven string. And I'm like, well, who needs seven strings? <laughs> Like, I was just oblivious to it. Like, well, what yeah, can you yeah. play with that? What do you need a seven string for? It's hard enough to play six. Yeah. And, and then now when I come back into the music thing, I find out like the seven and eight strings it's are everywhere. like yeah. the, the shit. So that's all I play is seven and eight string guitars now. You're, you're playing seven and eight strings now? Oh, yeah. All my so Yeah, everything I play is on a, on a seven string wow. and an eight string. I didn't actually know that because like you mentioned about the Les Paul Custom and I've seen you play in like, the Les Paul custom and some of the, some of your other guitars. I didn't know you were mostly playing sevens and even eights as well. Wow, that's a nice guitar, a Schecter. So is that a seven string then? I can't, yes, I can't, seven can't string with a with a um, Floyd Rose and a Sustainiac pickup. Wow, that looks so nice, man. Because it's 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 slick for a seven string as well. Yeah. Like it's it's, uh, it's probably one of the best guitars. So it, it does not have like Piazzo and stuff on it as well. No, like, all these no, it's got, so it's got the, um, it's got what's called the sustainiac, which it's got a switch on it that allow you to get infinite sustain yeah, right, yeah. of the same note or an octave higher. Oh yeah. And it's crazy because man, I wish I had something like that back when I used to play with D because uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. if you know a song called Under the Blade. Right. Yeah, and what the you're very like beginning the of the back. song goes, yeah. wah, 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 wah. Dude, there's nothing more like embarrassing than being on stage in front of two oh, yeah. full <laughs> stacks with your guitar and you're going yeah. And it won't feed back. Oh, and you're like, yeah, what man. the fuck? Where's the Oh sorry. Yeah, that's you're all like, right, man. No worries. You're like, where's the, you know, where's the feedback? Dude, this thing, like you just hit that switch, whatever note you want, it feeds back. And it's an awesome single coil, noiseless pickup in the bridge, in the yeah, neck position. That's it, man. It's really good. I, you know, great. I have a lot of really nice, well, it's Spike's guitar camp, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The Les Paul, <laughs> the Les Paul's like my main lead guitar, right. but the Schecter's are my, like every, and it allows me to sing in a key yeah, that... And it makes my voice sound higher because that's the thing. I, I can't get into that register that a lot of the modern bands are in, you know? Yeah. Well, even the old so, ones. <laughs> like, yeah, and I play in drop A. All my seven strings are in drop A. Drop A. And my wow, eight nice. string is in drop E. Wow. Eight, yeah, eight string. See, that, that that's what I thought. It's like, you know, harking back to when I said I first checked out your music. And the first thing I was thinking, okay, there's definitely like classic metal vibes going here. And then there was, I, as I was listening on, I, I, there were times where I was thinking, this is pretty heavy, actually. And, and yeah, the, now that really makes sense that you're using like drop A seven strings and even eight strings. So it's really cool. It makes for quite a unique sound because like, 
No, no other artist comes to mind so immediately that's kind of blessing, a, uh, blending a more classic metal sound with like, you know, such kind of heavy guitars and things like that. It's really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's allowed me to to do it, you know. Um, and but there's a lot of guys that play and drop C sharp. I think so. Yeah. It's D or drop C. It, 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 you could be uh, in D and then you drop it down to C. Yeah. The problem yeah, is, C, is yeah, that yeah. you're going to get if you don't have a guitar with a scale length long enough to handle that, mm -hmm. it's going to sound flubby and rubber bandy. Mm -hmm. Like the Schecter's a 26 and the, and the, and the eight string that I have goes from 25 and a half to multi-scale fan fret. Uh, have you ever seen uh, those? Yeah. Yeah. So it goes, from, yeah. goes from 25 and a half all the way to 27 or 28 yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. How do you so find you're playing, playing that? What? How, how do you find playing the fan frets and stuff then? It's amazing. I, like, I would love I to. Talk, I'd, I'd love to get I one. I talked to guys before I bought it. I was like, what? they're like, dude, you, you can't, you don't even know. They're like it's awesome and it really yeah. is when i started playing it i was like this might it might be my favorite guitar that's cool i have the Schecter silver mountain eight eight string nice. yeah <laughs> man yeah i'll send yeah, you a track yeah. playing on it. it it's just it's just like it's it, you know everybody's like uh well hey man that's like playing a bass guitar but if you put lighter strings see all yeah. these guys that you watch on youtube and stuff with the extended range instruments have really heavy, heavy strings on the guitar. Heavy, heavy strings. And they yeah. do have that bass like tone on the lower strings. Mm -hmm. I go really light with the strings. So okay. They get that metal sound. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is that, like, when it comes to actually then, like, producing it, you need to take off all that bottom end. Like, yeah. because otherwise it's going to, it turns to absolute flub. Because if you've got, like, a bass guitar in there as well, which obviously you need, like, yeah, there's 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 no room for it. So like, it's all well and good having all of that low end, but you've got to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, and, most and of what it. I do to what I do to offset that is I I have five string basses also. No, I see. But I found that playing a four string bass in the higher register with uh -huh. those low guitars actually makes it cleaner and yeah. more defined. Sure. Yeah, because if everything's yeah, yeah, yeah. in that low register, like you're saying, it's just going to be flubby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's it's a challenge to to get that for yep. sure. But and that's and the, you have to. That's and you the, have to have new strings. Oh right, yeah, yeah. As soon as the strings start going dead, you're done. Yeah, man. I don't know. Like, are you, I, uh, is it the the Sustainiac? Is that a, the bridge or is the pickup you said, right, like, isn't it? So, so, yeah, the Sustainiac is in the neck position. Yeah. And it's it's this thing. It fight, and you know what? It eats batteries. That's the oh, only problem right, with it. Right. So you put a 9 volt in there. And the problem okay. is, is if you're recording and you're using it, and then you just put the guitar back on the stand and you forget to turn it off. You need to unplug it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same uh, as like active, yeah, active pickups, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I have like the EMGs and stuff like that, but the battery seems to last practically but well, it's a long time but I but i was more thinking about the bridge like do you have like floyd roses things like that no so in the bridge position i have the floyd i always use floyd well see i have oh, some hardtails but my my schecters have the floyd rose yeah and in the uh bridge position i have these lundgren pickups and that's the guy from oh lundgren yeah yeah uh, it's the guy from he's a, in the scandinavian metal band um Ah, yeah, I can't I remember. Yeah, look it up, man. Is that is, <laughs> is that is it from Mashuga or? Yeah, Mashuga. That's yeah, who it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, they're all about like that tone, I suppose, isn't it? Like pickups, absolutely amazing. It's it's all that like really low, but like it just sounds massive. It sounds heavy as hell, but it's also like really kind of clean in that way. Yeah, that's that modern melt sound, isn't it? So. Yeah, amazing. But I mean, I must yeah. admit, man, like, I, it's something I need to get better at. Like, the whole maintenance side of guitars does my head in. I, I, so, I, I restring because it's a necessity or whatever, but like, I would rather <laughs> do as little of that as possible, man. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm starting a whole uh, YouTube side of Spike's guitar camp called Temple of Gear. Oh, yeah. And nice. I have some videos out. Well, I already did one in Temple of Gear. Um, intro instead of welcome to spikes guitar camp because 
when I was endorsed by Gem Guitars, I basically hung out at the factory and they were like, oh, hey, man, if you're going to hang around, you got to make yourself useful. <laughs> and cool, so yeah. I learned how to do some stuff. And now with the Internet, you can I mean, I watch videos of luthiers all yeah, day. Yeah. Nice. And I work on guitars. Mm. I know how to set guitars up. And uh, yeah, so it, it really is a big um, it's a big bonus to know how to do that stuff yeah. so that. Because I have, a, I don't know what kind of heat you guys have, but I have forced air, right? So mm -hmm. it's a hot air that comes out from a vent. And then in the, in the summer, it's cold air that comes out from the vent. Right. During the winter, like right now for us, it takes the humidity. Right now, I'm at like 21%. And I have humidity gauges all over my house because of my guitars. Right. And that affects the guitars, of course. We're, yeah. we're so dry right now. It's just, you almost can't even leave a guitar on a stand like I, like I have right now. Damn. I, I basically don't even leave the truss rod covers on my guitars. Wow. Because I got to constantly adjust them, you know. The Schecters hold really well. Um, the yeah. Les Paul, that can't be on the stand. You play it, you put it right back in the case. Wow. It, you know, and, and same mm. with the Strats. Um, there's certain guitars that just won't, you know, um, you know, who's got the ability to have climate control in their house? Yeah, it's quite, you, you can climate control for you, you know, yeah, like, yeah, Oh, yeah. I'm not hot or I'm not too cold, but your guitars are like a whole nother, you know, a whole nother entity. Damn. Yeah. So, it is fascinating. The whole like lithium side of things, you know, the actual build of yeah. these instruments. I mean, they're incredible instruments, obviously. I can admire them as, as much as the next guy, you know. I just yeah, you I ever just, pick up you ever pick up your uh your telly and it just feels like the strings are higher? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, I mean the the Explorer right now, I've got that big time. Like I didn't play it for ages and start playing it again and I, especially at the top, I'm like, oh man, the action is come up right. so much man yeah yeah it's because your neck has been your what they call relief in the neck has increased so it goes from this to this yeah and then yeah, a back yeah. a back bow would be like this and that's the truss rod adjustment right the truss rod so you always yeah, yeah. like if you're sitting with your guitar in your hand and you put that truss rod adjuster on, i don't know if it's an allen key or or like yeah, les yeah. paul's have that special key if you want to decrease the bow in the neck you're going to go back towards you so it's mm -hmm. counterclockwise or it's actually clockwise if you're, if you're looking at it like this you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. so and then then there's all kinds of things you put a capo on the first on the first fret you take a feeler gauge on the sixth fret mm -hmm. you know once you know how to do it it's really simple it sounds yeah. like oh my god i don't know how to do that but yeah it's yeah, really yeah. easy it's all when practice you, um, for sure yeah it's got to be that's good that you yeah, had that experience working in the in the factory and stuff. Like, yeah, must have been really cool. Like seeing a lot. Oh, of dude, you know, um, you, have you ever seen the um, the what they call the, the like um, there were these balls. Uh, what are they called? Super balls, and they had that swirly kind of crazy thing on them. Like, have you ever seen the gem guitars that have that swirl paint job on them? Uh, oh, yeah, on on the body or. Yeah. 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 Cool. So yeah. the way that he used to do that was he used to put like a two by four or, you know, whatever a piece of wood and bolt it to the neck, mm -hmm. take a fit. And he had like a 50 gallon drum full of water mm -hmm. and put the ink on top of the water. It would float on top of the water. Oh, wow. And he would dip the guitar into that. And as it dipped in, the, the, the ink would attach itself to the white body that he had primed and yeah. then he would shake it to get the ink away. So when you pulled it out, it didn't double dip. Wow. And sometimes it looked great and sometimes it didn't. And then they would just wipe it down and do it again. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Such a process, man. Like very. Yeah. yeah. And, and then Ibanez, I guess, you know, what the uh, rights to that or wh whatever, you know, Right. So, no. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I suppose. So, it was this whole own brand basically before Ivan. So, Gem, yeah. It. Gem was like a homegrown kind of, kind of, you know, company yeah. that became big and sold out to a big company. Yeah. Which yeah. I didn't go along with. Yeah. Yeah. Fair <laughs> wasn't enough. included in the, in the sale. Yeah. You weren't, what, didn't make it to the Ivanez catalog. <laughs> but, no, no. <laughs> never did. Yeah, but you know what? I had some great guitars. But but you know, being yeah, endorsed yeah. by a guitar company is a it's like a kiss and a curse, though. You know, 
Like, yeah, if you're restricted, I, I, yeah. Oh, you know, some gigs. I was, I was a gigging guitar. I mean, we, I used to play every night, you know, mm-hmm. and and they would come with like a twenty guitar rack behind me on stage. That's awesome. And man. every song, man, a new guitar, a new guitar, new wow. guitar, and 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 I'll never forget. And this is what really turned me off the scalloped fretboards. Is that um. Oh yeah. I had no idea what they were. I didn't even know what a scalp yeah, fretboard so you were, like, was. Yeah, playing. What's going on? <laughs> Dude, it was it was so bad. It was so yeah. out of tune and oh, I was like, man. "What is this? What is going on?" And 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 then I found out. So it's it's oh, crazy yeah. because I know there's some nice guitars like Ingve's signature model and some stuff that have scalp. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never play a scalp." But yeah, you know, so the, the kiss and the curse is that the kiss is that you're like a rock star with all these guitars. And people yeah, are like, yeah. "Oh, how how do you have all these guitars? But the curse is that you can't play any one guitar for more than a song sometimes. And it's yeah, like, right. I know a lot, that doesn't go on in a lot of things, but you know, basically it was a company that was trying to get off the ground. So and, you were like promoting you know, them basically. You were like showing yeah, the collection. My job. That was my job. So I had to do it. You know, if I wanted free stuff, I had to pay for, I had to pay for it in a different way, you know, which was yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like, so now, like I said, like, I'm really happy to have like a Gibson Les Paul custom and I have a Firebird. I have, I have like all nice. kinds of like great guitars I could never play before due to the endorsement. You know, I couldn't, yeah, uh, could. yeah. yeah. So I, mean, you know, and it's fine, you know, mm-hmm. but I, like I said, you know, in, in summary, I'm really happy that I'm able to do what I want now rather than do what I have to. Yeah. That's it, it, it's man. a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really cool, man. Like ultimately that's it. It's like, it's the most important thing is just enjoying the process of what you're doing, you know, enjoying that moment being, you know, in flow with, with, with that, you know? And, and so the fact that you have f- freedom now, is kind of the most valuable thing, right? Really is. It really is. It's the biggest thing. It's, it, it's the best thing in the world for me. Cause like I said, I have friends who are very, very, um, dependent upon making money and getting gigs yeah. and and that kind of thing and 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 you know and that in itself though is actually exciting if you're into it and you're like like you're competitive and you want to you know you want to do that yeah but for me i'm you know i'm past that and i just want to be able to, yeah. a bit of a young man's game isn't it not that you can't do it pretty when you're much older, but you know you definitely more <laughs> have that energy more <laughs> as a young man you know i well, already already feel that uh passing for me so yeah yeah if you look up the dates of the bands i'm mentioning you'll kind of get an idea (laughs) exactly (laughs) man yeah yeah but it's you know it's great now you know and i I love like a lot of the new guys like i'm always looking for like a new band Mm -hmm. um that's cool somebody turn me on to this band of vukovi Mm -hmm. i don't know if you ever heard of them I'm not sure. Sounds interesting. What kind of music? Oh yeah, they're kind of just metal, like that, should I say <laughs> they're metal, like but with a kind of new age kind of synth kind of sound. It's like it's weird. I don't know I like what that. you would really call it, but I I dig the energy of the band. I like a lot of a lot of new bands are really good, man. Um, Do you know? I think that I think that's interesting. Actually, first of all, it's great that you have that opinion. I think because you obviously come directly from an era of many great bands you know but um i think that's the thing a lot of people maybe take this pessimistic view that music sucks now because you look at the charts or or you look at the mainstream culture and it's not where it was in 70s or 80s or 90s maybe you know and there's no like big rock and metal bands don't have the influence that they did at that time perhaps but like the 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 statement that like music in general is not good i think it's just so wrong because there's just so much music out there there's like everything out there like you just have to be willing to go and find it man and you can get like anything yeah. that you want and stuff that you never would have thought of and things that will blow your mind you know so yeah i mean would you agree with that 100 percent. because i've always said the biggest problem in the music industry is what i call the gatekeepers yeah, you know, right. the yeah. people who decide who gets heard, who doesn't get heard. I mean, even Instagram does the same crap. 
You know, mm-hmm. I get yeah. I get these yeah, like uh, pop ups every day. Like, oh, do you want to boost this post? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's boost it. Oh, it's going to cost. Get out of here. <laughs> you know, and then and then like I have a couple of friends and I know, you know, the same guys I do. They'll send me like a clip of somebody and they'll be like, this guy's got like 40,000 followers and the guy can't even play. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. it says sponsored at the top of his of his post. Yeah. And it's like. It's a pay for play kind of scam, you know? Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. But there's new bands. I just got turned on to a band that I never heard of. And they're not new. They're new to me. Old Skillet. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah. Band? yeah I've heard of them. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. This drummer that they have is insane. This girl is just incredible. Yeah, um, nice. But I do. I find these bands all the time. I'm always on YouTube looking at what's awesome. new, what's going on. Yeah. But for me, a band has to have like a real high energy. They have to have a, um, you know, um, a message Mm -hmm. too. like the the song has to say something. Mm -hmm. It can't just be mindless drivel with some heavy guitars. And then you break it down and go, what are they talking about? What 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 am I listening to? Yeah. yeah, You know, it's all it's actually all encompassing. It's that the heavy sound with the message and, and and a spark. You know, something that makes you interested in wanting to listen to it, you know? Yeah, 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 Um, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. So many people I know get like, uh, they just get enchanted by, oh, these guys have 3 million followers and this is like the new thing. And it's like, I don't know, I guess they're good, but, and I don't like putting musicians down. Like, you know, that's really not my thing, man. Uh, You know, um, if if I see a band and I don't like that style of music or that genre, I'm going to be like, hey, you know, uh, uh, these guys obviously have something that appeals to the people who like them. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not appealing to me. But they're good musicians. I mean, they're a good band. It's 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 they don't. It's like you know, people just love to say they suck. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. It's like you know the go to. That's like the go to. <laughs> like they suck. Yeah, yeah you yeah, know. Yeah. But there's just music that you don't listen to you know yeah. like if you're in your car and you're driving and you're listening to the radio and a song comes on that you don't like you, you just turn it do you, you, know, uh, you don't, uh is it all metal for you or what do you like other music outside uh, of that? you know i i hate to say it because you know then my metal my metal image will be ruined man <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> eagles <laughs> Oh, the eagles nice man oh you know i come from that era you know for eagles sure. yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's still David Bowie, classic, obviously. I mean, oh, you know, that's one of my favorite favorites. Maybe I am Ziggy favorite. Stardust. That's it, man. <laughs> Dude, exa- yeah, again, like you and I, we know, like we're we're all into that, man. Intergalactic rock star stuff. You know? Yes. For me, like, yeah, Ziggy Stardust really kind of brought that to to the forefront. So, yeah, absolutely, man. You know, and and uh, you know, if I hear like. Uh, I don't know, you know, Zeppelin, obviously, you know, but, but, but certain songs, I don't, you know, some Zeppelin stuff is like, ah, I don't want to hear it, but you know, if I hear like when the levee breaks or, you know, uh, or the ocean, you know, or, um, you know, or not stairway, I'll never listen to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the song that shall not be mentioned. Yeah. 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 Bla- bless me. But, uh, no stairway. Yeah, man, I come from that era, you know, and, and I'll even, you know, I even like other like Motown stuff or, mm-hmm. or whatever. But if I really want to listen to music, I'm listening to metal. I'm ACDC. Yeah. Rock. So rock and metal, like rock and metal. It's got to, it's got to have yeah. a beat. It's, it's like, uh, what do you think of like the punk pop thing? Hmm. Uh, I, I produced a little bit of pop punk music, which is really? an interesting experience. Like I was producing a band, uh, like friends of mine. So it kind of definitely working on it gave me a, a closer uh, appreciation, I would say, because I think f- my first impression is it's not necessarily something I really associate with. I don't really see myself as a pop punk guy, especially what? like especially being British as well. Like, I think it's quite an American thing. Oh, you, you think know? that? Yeah, you know what? You I, know? Yeah, you're right. Okay, I can see that. Like, but I always liked it. Like, you know, I guess I didn't identify with it so much, but like, when you kind of disconnect from that, I think the at the end of the day, it's just like melodic rock music, right? I mean, poppy rock music, but yeah, I think there's some good tunes there. Um, so, yeah, what about you? 
So for me, being an American, yeah, I relate very well to it because it nice. reminds me. Yeah, cool. So what pop punk? So a guy, my buddy, who's who's a pop punk guy, he's in a band. He tore. They're really good. You know, Blink One Eighty Two is like kind of the holy grail of the pop of punk movement, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I listen to these songs, I'm like, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of being at like somebody's parents' house. Yeah. Who are yeah, at home. Yeah. The parents are away That's and they're it, having yeah, a keg yeah. party <laughs> at the house and they're throwing Literally. girls in bikinis into the swimming pool while they're doing like, like those, those yeah. shots off, like, 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 you know, funnel shots and everybody's wasted. It's a bunch of kids. Like that's exactly what it reminds me of. And, and yeah, that's yeah. how I grew up. It's that, it's that American pie, like teen movie Is it? Yeah. style. Why, that's thing. not an English, like that. That oh, no, don't get me wrong. That, that happens for sure. You know, for, for sure. In our own way. I just think that the way that it's, that association like i'm i'm so with you that like i i can't there's a word for it isn't it i don't i can't think of it right now but you know that kind of frat party type thing you know yeah especially that, especially when i think of like american pie and these kind of teen yeah, movies right, exactly like, yeah, and, yeah and and so and so that brings me to another point that that's what music is music is imagery it's it's a thing that ties you into a th yeah. you know an activity like culture or, and yeah yeah or, or or something that you did you know yeah. like you have memories as a kid in high school like oh man the first time I heard Judas Priest I was puking on a tree outside <laughs> my my friend's house you know like you have yeah, all these yeah, like yeah. crazy memories a music is memory you know it creates yeah, memory yeah. and it creates feelings you know and and there's too many people. If I could say anything, you know, or give any advice to, to, to people starting out is, is don't pay so much attention to the mathematics of it, you know, because it's like, oh, this is an A minor chord and this is, this is the seventh of the thing, you know, yeah, theory is great. Yeah, and, yeah. and I learned it, you know, and, and whatever, and it's good to know it, but you have to be able to disassociate yourself from that and mm -hmm. be able to create something that comes emotionally from your heart that mm -hmm. that you can play you know um i think i think these days and i watch you know it's crazy i, I go on instagram and i click metal guitar players and i see a 13 year old girl playing jason becker riffs <laughs> that i can't even begin yeah, man. yeah <laughs> i yeah, can't yeah. even begin to play and i'm like this little girl's blowing me away totally like, man this so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's great, you know, it and is. that's good to have the, the physical dexterity yeah. and and be able to do that is amazing. But I, for me, I can only listen to that for a minute, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, yeah, all right, it's great, but it's not something I want to listen to, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so music is a very touchy subject because what one person likes, another person doesn't. Mm -hmm. So what's the quantifier of this is great. Some people I know say, well, this guy sold more albums than anybody else. That's why he's the greatest. But there's a ton of people who go, I hate that guy. Yeah. yeah Are they yeah, idiots? Yeah. Yeah, it's just completely no. subjective, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. They just don't, it just doesn't appeal to them and their mm -hmm. lifestyle because music is also a um, sort of, um, promotion of lifestyle like you know yeah. if you listen to rap music they're talking about whatever if you listen exactly. to country music they're talking about whatever if you listen to different genre all different genres are a different sort of type of people who are in that group yeah, it's a culture if you're not one community. of them and you don't yeah, yeah. like sort of like associate with it well, it's not like you're saying hey you guys stink you're not you're no good <laughs> i just don't like that yeah that's and, it and, and some yeah, people yeah. can't accept that you're like yeah, no, yeah. this is the greatest thing that's ever happened, and you you have to listen to it, and it's you know yeah. it, it's sad in a way, you know. Well, I guess if you're born in like deep south and you're grown up in this whole like thing, and cowboy hats and you know trucks is what you're into, obviously <laughs> like the country stuff is going to be the best thing that you ever heard. And you, you guys know, have such a great image of, of our country. <laughs> no, that was not of the the whole country. I was actually going to parallel, you know, that if you had these people in, in the South or whatever, as opposed to, you know, someone like yourself on the East Coast, it's a completely kind of different setup, but then, right? But, but it's a good point. And, and then you have to look at like Leonard Skinner. 
Yeah, well, exactly. Leonard they played Skinner into that. Was, yeah, yeah. was that a Georgia, was... I think Georgia, Alabama, whatever they were from. Those yeah, well, guys Alabama, transcended so. all of that. <laughs> They were yeah, they yeah, were yeah. appealing to the metal guys, the rock yeah. guys, the country yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. Like they just crossed over all those things, mm-hmm. and that's a truly amazing, yeah. amazing thing to be able to do. And that, that's why they're one of the greatest bands in the world. That takes special artists to yeah to really yeah. kind of transcend things like that. I think yeah. like I, Bowie was another artist that was able to do that as well. Yeah, like transcend. Yeah, man. Lots of different you genres know, and things. Stones, you know, the Stones yeah. were great. I mean, you know, I I come from that era where where all these blues rock bands started to get, you know, and then it became heavier. You know, mm. Sabbath. Sabbath was a big was a big thing too. You know, do you um, like uh, do you like Ozzy Sabbath and Dio Sabbath? What's that? Do you like Ozzy Sabbath and Dio Sabbath? Dio's amazing. I mean, they nice. couldn't have. Heaven and Hell album is probably one of the greatest metal albums of yeah. all time. Nice. Man. Yeah, Dio's actually a New Yorker. Yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, actually he Italian from New York. heritage. Another Italian you? from New yeah. York, like me. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. says like this is the Devil's Horns. That's it. it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's actually called the Maloikia in Italian, and it, it's the uh, it wards off evil spirits. That's it. Yeah. How cool uh, people that? think yeah. it's like this. <laughs> satanic thing and it's not yeah, yeah. um kind of the opposite actually, in a way what's that kind of the opposite in a way yeah i actually one of my good friends played bass for him teddy this guy teddy cook played played bass for dio, for dio yeah, and man. um what a legend what's that what a legend dio man he's amazing man i mean that heaven and hell album has got to be one of the greatest albums of all time yeah. You know, and it's it's weird too, right? Because ACDC came out with Back in Black without Bond. Was that the same year? That became like one of the greatest albums of all time. That, that was like the same time, practically, wasn't it? About 1980, I think. Uh, yeah, it's was, weird, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, know, it, you know, how many bands are able to replace a singer and become more popular? Yeah. It almost never happens, you know? These are the, these are the icons. I mean, these are the totally. people that we look at and put on a pedestal and say, wow like I, uh, you know i mean how yeah. could you ever be that you know and you want to be that you you dream that you want to be those guys you know mm-hmm. um but in the end yeah. you have to be i think um i think there's a certain amount of um i don't want to say compromise but i think you have to know your pay grade yeah. at, a, at a certain level you yeah, know you have fair. to say hey man you know everybody wants to be you know jerry seinfeld but we're all george <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's it. Like, and most of us have to be. So I think, yeah, I think it's an important thing to to come to terms with that. You're right, because otherwise, like, if you kind of walk around with this uh, inflated perception of yourself, it's not going to do you any favors. <laughs> yeah, well, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, I, look, I, I I I wanted to be the best I could be. I wanted to be one of these guys or whatever. And in the end, it's like, well, you know what? They they might be just a little better. What are you going to do? But so then you have to figure out, well, how am I going to do it? I don't know. It's just it, but, all about comparing yourself only to your past self, right? That's what it's all about. You're you only in what? competition That's with yourself. Good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Good way to put it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I was wrong what I just said before. You're right. It, absolutely. No, I'm. I mean, I'm with you. I, 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 yeah, I get the point though completely for sure. I think that. I think that, as you say, it really serves its purpose for us to have these icons and these inspirations and that that bar, you know what I mean? But like, it is tip of the iceberg, like these absolute legends of rock and metal, like for every one of them, there's been God knows how many great musicians, even great guitarists, whatever, that you never heard of, you know? Great point, dude. I, when we were uh, when we were shopping a record deal uh, with, with the band that we work with, Nicky and Tommy, we went to we went to every major record label, mm-hmm. and I'll never forget. Um, I think it was John Tita from Polygram was like, you know, he's like things you the thing you guys don't understand is that there's a Led Zeppelin in every town, mm-hmm. there's a Motley Crue in every town. There's a, like, and it was like we were like, what is this guy talking about? And then he kind of brought it around. He said, my point is that if nobody knows who you are, nobody's ever going to know who you are. Unless you get discovered or somebody brings you, he goes, there are bands in this country that are so amazing that nobody's ever going to hear because nobody ever found them. Yeah. And we were like, oh man, you know, like, 
Like, you know, and, and, but I don't know. I don't know how much I agree with that. Well, maybe back then it was more, it was, it was, it was, I think back then it might've been truer because there was no internet. There was no mm-hmm. cell phones. There were no, like, how did people even know where anybody was or how to call anybody? It's crazy to think of, of now, isn't it? It's kind of impossible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it was. Like, how do we somehow. even know where we were going? Like, I, I don't even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you know where everybody is all the time, yeah. where they're playing, what they're doing. Everybody's on social media. Yeah, that's and I'm it. a big fan. Yeah, I'm a big fan of social media. But I'll tell you what, I'm not a fan of, and this has been happening to me lately. <laughs> I don't know why I'm bringing this up. <laughs> Fuck it. it. This has been bothering me. Like lately, I have guys on Instagram that are copying my videos and playing some stupid crap over it. Like, I just had this Satan worshiper take my last video and put, like, lamb sounds and 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 kind of, like, <laughs> the- yeah, like, and he's got this thing. He's got all these satanic things on it and whatever. And I was like, well, I, I messaged him. That's, that sounds really crazy, man. <laughs> I messaged him. I'm like, dude, what is, what is wrong with you? Like, so I'm going to, I'm going to like ostracize all the black metal guys that follow me right now. I'm a Christian and my <laughs> message in all my videos is basically, uh, did we talk about this already? <laughs> we, you and I, we did off of the uh, podcast, oh, but all, I would, be, was, I would okay. be interested to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let me get into this. So, so like I'm a history buff, right? And I'm, I'm a Christian and, um, and, I, and I'm a, like, so I study history and it turns out like that the Vikings had a very parallel um, belief system as the Christians. You know, they had the old father, which is Odin. We have yeah. God. Son was Thor. We have Jesus, Loki, like every single person in their religious sort of sphere is almost parallel to the Christians, but they were more badass. Like they had a more badass, like kind of yeah, yeah. crew, you know. They were gonna kick your ass. Odin's like and, the most badass guy of all time, pretty much. Right. So, yeah. so they came and they for they they um they raided England mostly, right? Uh-huh. And so eventually, the English royalty was like, "Hey, man, you know, like, uh, what if we pay you guys to keep the other guys out?" like the Danes and the other, all the other Scandinavians. Right. So he said, okay. And so they came over and next thing you know, they intermarry with the English royalty. Right. And so next thing you know, England's got the biggest Navy in the world. They take over the world and it's, these Viking dudes that, that basically were the, you know, the reason, at least the way I see it, (laughs) you know what I mean? So I took a lot of artistic Liberty in, um, war horse which was uh, about the Battle of Armageddon. Yeah, one and, of your tracks, right, for anybody. Yeah, so it's the Battle of Armageddon, and basically I took some artistic liberty and had <laughs> Odin and Jesus fighting the four horsemen. Yeah. <laughs> and Odin is on his horse Slipnir, which is the eight-legged horse, and Jesus is on his white horse, which is what the song is about. War Horse is about Jesus' white horse. Mm-hmm. And they go in, they wipe out everybody, and at the very end, Odin is bowing, to Jesus. Yeah. Symbolism. Was, it's, it, it's symbolism yeah. within the art, you know? And so, so like I got all these black metal guys that are always like, yeah, dude, they send me these videos with upside down crosses and shit. And I'm like, get <laughs> out of here. So is that just because of the, because uh, of the makeup, I guess. They're yeah. Like, look at me. You know what I mean? They, so yeah, they, they think, automatically oh, this is a black assume. Metal <laughs> they automatically assume. Now I did do a black. So my favorite band is steel Panther. Oh yeah! Oh man, Steel Panther is uh, so good, man. You have to give it. They're the best. It's comedy. It's comedy, and it's fantastic comedy. Yeah, yeah. Within the comedy is incredible musicianship as well. Absolutely, every one of them is like top, top. And they did. I don't know if you ever saw their black metal band. No, I don't think I did. They did. Was that recent? Let's get. It's called Let's Get High Tonight. (laughs) So now. I Is have it by Steel Panther or, or, or Steel like, Panther? Let's get high tonight. And but it's them as like black metal, doing a bl- but no, they're you're dressed like black metal guys. Oh, they're dressed like okay, yeah. I d- I don't know if I know that one. So I I'm did. Gonna, a, I'm gonna have I to did look, a photo on Instagram that. where I was imitating 
thing. And everybody's like, yeah, steel pit. I was like, yeah, Satchel will be proud. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I love, I, I, I loved steel Panther. Uh, around about the first, like three albums or something. I was like, so into them. I, I saw them in London as well. It's just, it was just so much fun. But I think yeah. that I think that that's what's so good about that kind of the whole hair metal thing. It's Absolutely, just, it's just it's just really fun, man. And like, no, you could dress yeah. up like this and be and just yeah, be yeah. crazy and do whatever you want. It's as, fun. as you like, say, the kind of like you know the stuff that all harks back to Kiss in a way, right? Like just yeah. that big arena rock, over the top, like fun. <laughs> you know, flames, shine. giant explosions going that's off. It. Yeah, that's it, you man. Know? You just it's it's wholesome. You know, yeah, do you want to go see some guy sitting in a park playing a, like acoustic guitar, singing about his girlfriend left him? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. wants that shit. You want to? You want a, a rock show, man? You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta love it, man. Like and like, I I, I kind of like didn't listen to Steel Panther for a while. Me too. After, after that, because then I thought, like, I was listening to it all the time and I loved it. And then I kind of thought, oh, I don't know, maybe this is a bit too silly, whatever. And so I left it for years and maybe I was taking myself too seriously at that point. But then, like, yes. after after a bunch of years, I just thought, man, Still Panther is still going so strong. They're still doing so well. They're still, like, smashing the festivals every year and all that. They released more records. And I just went back and listened to all that stuff and thought, like, man, you can't fault these guys. Like, they're absolutely smashing it. You know, they're so they're such good musicians, and they must just have so much fun doing what they're doing. You know, you know who Paul Gilbert is, right? Sure, yeah. Everybody. Like, does. Do you know that Satchel, so. the guitar player for Steel Panther, was Paul Gilbert's roommate, and actually really? wrote the last Racer X album. He he wrote the album. He wrote the last Racer X album, and then Paul Gilbert came back from touring with Mr. Big or whatever, yeah. and he recorded the album. Satchel wrote it. Wow. He's Dude, the guy's a great he's guitar an player. Insane guitar player. He's, he's a kind great, of like I've, he kind of perfected that genre, <laughs> to be honest. Like he's like he absorbed everything that happened in hair metal yeah. and turned it into like some evolved version man <laughs> which is weird right because like from what everything i've just said is what it's everything i'm against right <laughs> but but this guy it's not though it's not completely though it is there is an originality to it for sure man he figured out a way and have you yeah. seen the band surreal panther <laughs> How many versions of Steel Panther no, are there? <laughs> it's a it's a tribute band to, to, for Steel Panther, okay. and they're so dude, and there's such a comedy act that Steel Panther actually brought them up on stage. Uh, nice. You got to look them nice. up. Surreal oh, Panther. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the lead singer weighs like four hundred pounds. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, I it's, can't imagine I can't, too, too many of those are like high jumps and all that david lee roth <laughs> stuff that, uh, it's hysterical he's good though the band is good they they're a good band nice um you know this is that's the thing man you have to have fun it, it can't yeah. be so serious all the time where everybody's like i'll tell you what that, that we can we can like do a like a, a take right here okay so you Go can it. edit it i'll shut up for a second one of the great things about playing with d schneider is that he was a very forgiving employer, if you will. Like cool. in the beginning, when you first put the band together, like, cause you know, um, Twisted Sister had been broken up and D wanted to start doing it again. He tried to get the original guys back together. It wasn't working out. So he decided, I'm just going to hire some young guys that are hungry and we're going to, you know, get out there and play. We played the Twisted Sister albums like there was like five albums or we did like a two hour set of a mm. you know a montage of all the songs that were in all those albums that's a lot of songs to learn yeah, you yeah, know yeah. and and back then when you're young and you have a good mind that you can remember stuff uh it wasn't that hard but it was still pretty difficult it was still you know a, a challenge and so the first you know couple of shows on the tour were let's say not like as good as you want them to be yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd be in the dressing room after after the show, and Dee would come in and he'd be like, "All right, man, 
you know, look, it's only going to get better. Don't worry about it. Like he was a very like, um, he had a very positive sort of um, proactive like way about him. Like, like he didn't come into the dress room and be like, you guys are fucking sorry. <laughs> That's all right, man. You guys, you know, you guys are, you know, you're not pulling your weight. What are you doing? Like you're fired or something yeah, like a yeah, lot yeah, of guys, yeah, yeah. you know, well, that you hear way. about, yeah, 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 you hear yeah. about that stuff. Right. Dude, he, he was a really good guy. Like he would come in and be like, look, all right, it's not going to happen overnight. We're going to get better. You know, we're going to work at it and yada, yada. And then that really like, um, that really like, uh, put a, a thing in my head about how to be like a, a good person, you know, how to be like somebody who's uh, understanding of other people's sort of like, you know, cause you, you're used to being you. And then like somebody else comes along you're like, well, you, you know, you're not cutting it, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Do you, you know what I'm saying? I know a hundred percent what you're saying. Man. Yeah. I think- that meant a lot to me too, you know? That's it. Yeah. And it encourages you. And then you can thrive more, man. Yeah. Like, I remember that it's, it's like a live. it was a live album you did, but didn't you do uh I remember seeing f- a concert footage from you performing with D. Uh, oh, for me it, playing with D. Yeah. 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 yeah did you have a live uh, yeah. album that, that it was or something like that? It was, a, it was tuxedo junction, nice. Connecticut. Yeah, and man, that was that was just awesome. You you guys love. Oh, it was a great it, experience. Man. I mean, I love playing with the. So um, yeah, I, I I would have almost left my band to play with him, but he was doing a movie at the time in uh, Strange Land, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Look, man, I I got to take a break for a couple of months and do this movie and blah blah blah." And I was just like, uh, you know, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to Europe, man." You know, and I'm playing yeah. with my band, and he was like, and he was always very supportive of that. Like, he was always like, uh, he's nice. like, "Hey, man, you're never gonna like go anywhere playing for me. I'm just gonna pay you for you know, play some shows or whatever." He's like, you know, you're making your own way in the industry. You got it. You got to, you know, that's cool. You got to do it. You know, it does seem and like I a did. good guy. Yeah. But yeah. then, but then, like a couple of years later, he put the band back together, and. um I, I wasn't available and they wound up going like Sweden and over in Europe uh, and like, uh, I, mean, I think they even played Wacken or something. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been funny. Yeah. But, oh, well, but uh, you know, like if, if you're like, like, how old are you? Like, you don't have to record this and put this on the fine. tape. No, right? I'm 27. So, uh, I was like <laughs> being born around about this time. <laughs> So yeah. imagine this, like you've heard the Twisted Sister records, of right? Of course, yeah, yeah. And you know the song, I Want to Rock. Of course, who doesn't, yeah. So, you know, there we are on a black stage with D under a spotlight at the front of the stage, a giant crowd of people screaming, D, D, like, because that's, you know, nobody cared who we were. <laughs> of course, he's, and, he's the and, man, yeah. and then all of a sudden you'd be like, I want to rock, and and we'd all yell rock <laughs> and it seems so stupid that's <laughs> nah, awesome man. to Again, the average it's mortal fun. it's it's like the most ridiculous <laughs> thing in the world but it was the most like high octane adrenaline rush yeah that you could ever imagine you know i bet man it, it was just beyond you know and, and and like i said i was a mercenary it wasn't they weren't my songs i didn't write them but I was a huge fan of the band and getting into the band was just like a dream come true. You know what I mean? I can imagine, man. It must have been just, but, yeah, hell you know, but, you know, it's, it's like, it's a tough life, you know, because after that, what do you do? You gotta, you gotta do something else. Everybody's always scrambling for their next gig, you know? Yeah. Where, what are you up to with uh, what your little project that's going on? I'm well, going to start interviewing you. Yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it around. Yeah. Well, I, I, I spend most of my time here at, at my computer working on all sorts of different things and similar to yourself, really, you know, I, yeah, but you were doing, you were doing the videos. I watched your videos, but then you started doing that like world, that animation world. Mm-hmm. What was it called? So, so the, the, I do most of my stuff under love anarchy, right? That's kind of the organization. Right, love anarchy, right. And then there's like the love anarchy universe, which I call love anniverse. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
And, and so where are you at with that now? Well, it's still, I'm still building a lot, but this year I'm really hoping to release a lot more stuff. And, um, you know, I, 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 I think that we're in a similar boat with that. You know, we like to create these more like music that has these kind of over the top, uh, you know, larger than life kind of themes. And I'm with you that like, it's good to just get it out there, you know, get like, and try and put as much out as you can, you know, um, like, so there, that's, I'm, I'm definitely looking to, uh, put out a lot more, uh, this year, like last year, I only managed to release one song the year before I released two albums. Um, so I planned to perhaps do more last year, but things got a bit carried away, like, especially, uh, having a baby, <laughs> definitely, oh. uh, <laughs> definitely kind of, um, you know, that became kind of like a pretty big <laughs> focus. <laughs> so it kind of, that, uh, some things. do you find that you throw stuff away? Th throw stuff away what like well something that gone. you come up with and you think it's good at first and then you start like you know you start working on it and go yeah i don't like it mm, maybe i i try and i used to suffer really bad from perfectionism a lot but in more recent times i've really just tried to kind of practice kind of like removing that from the forte and just enjoying making stuff and then seeing what stuff kind of gains more traction really but how do you feel do you do you get that a lot no see i'm the same as you like yeah there was a time when that used to happen mm. but now i find that i'm able to channel a lot better mm -hmm. and i don't really come up with ideas that i don't like and it's you know it sounds it can sound uh, I, I uh, you that. know yeah, you know, but, but yeah, no, recently I, I've been coming up with so much stuff and I'm just like, and I, um, I get it on my phone or, or some kind of recording with, with, with the vocals and I come up with my vocals and melody lines at the same time. I don't usually really write anything out. Like mm -hmm. I know a lot of people write lyrics and they write to me, it comes into my head. I have a kitchen nice. that has a really good ambience to oh, it. That's a, yeah, that's like a it one. sounds like an <laughs> echo chamber and it's like cool. singing in the shower. I yeah, guess people yeah, talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, and I, all of a sudden I'll just come up with something. I'll just sing it into my phone. And lately, like everything I come up with to, in my mind yeah. is a smash hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. That's wicked. You know? man. Yeah. 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 That's I great. mean, it may, it may suck to other people maybe, but to me, Doesn't like, matter. like I yeah. have a certain, you know, and the thing about, do you sing at all? Yeah. Yeah. Similar. similar so do you feel that certain words feel a certain way coming out Definitely. of your mouth? Definitely, man. So, yeah, yeah. so sometimes I have to change words within that original idea because it doesn't feel right coming out of my mouth yeah. or the way it feels. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I, I definitely do, man. And I've definitely done it before where I tried to change the lyrics to make it work more in a written sense, but then it just doesn't come out yes. of the mouth right. Even if the syllables are, are correct, it just doesn't flow right. You know what I mean? I definitely get what you're yes. saying. And that's that's the thing I, I find the most. Um, I want, at the end of Symphonic Superstar, I wanted to say, because it says, I'm a symphonic superstar, and it goes, I wanted to say, yes, I are. <laughs> you know what that's from? Go on, tell me. It's from Rock and Roll Singer by ACDC. Ah, oh, right, right. So Bon Scott says, I want to be a rock and roll singer. I want to be oh, yeah. a rock, rock and, and roll, roll star. star. Yeah, yeah. I want to be a rock and roll singer. I want to be a rock and roll, a rock and roll star. And it goes on, he goes, yes, I are. <laughs> <Do> you know? <laughs> wow. It's the greatest line of all time. I and hadn't I clocked wanted... that, but I'm definitely going to clock that. that? I hadn't clocked that. Like I've heard that song a whole bunch of times, but uh, now, now I'll he, never miss that again. <laughs> he goes, yes, I are. Me and my cousin used to laugh our asses all day. That's the greatest line of all time. Yeah, and right. I was actually just talking to my cousin uh, the other day. And I was like, you don't know how bad I wanted to do that, but I don't know what the rules are. Yeah. Like, if you do that, will you get some kind of copyright infringement or? Oh, from saying yes. If you well, did who the same knows? Thing. You know, I don't know how it works. I feel 
Nah, I feel like something like that you could definitely get away with it. That's a home. You get away with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. It's a line, you know what I mean? I think plenty of songs have the same bloody lines, like you know. Yeah. So, I, but you know, it's if funny. you copy I, like I, if you copied the entire chorus, then okay. But no, I think I think you can get away with it. Yes, I am. That's a that's a little uh, tip of the hat, I would say. That would be cool. Bon was great, man. He's one of my favorite singers of all time. Definitely was one of the bands that uh, inspired me so much as a as a little kid. I think it is probably is for a lot of people. It's ACDC have become such a gateway into into rock music. And but, you yeah. know when uh, and who's the new singer? Um, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. Well, I mean, you know, he did Back in Black. Yeah, the guy was amazing. You know, and mm. and and actually, I think the story was that. Bon Scott actually found him and said, if anything ever happens to oh, me, really? this is the guy. Wow, that's handy. <laughs> and then it was Brian such a Johnson, quick turnaround as well, wasn't it? I mean, like like straight away basically, like they didn't really like push back their album schedule or anything. Just Bon Scott died, okay, this guy's in, new album out. And then they, they recorded they they were like neg eight. On the it was like negative eight decibels on the album. It was like the loudest album of all time. Wow! <laughs> on Back in Black is that? Back in Black, yeah, it's a great album, man. Every yeah. song is that you their know, best selling certain, one? I think it probably is as well. Yeah, it's there a are certain album. albums that just have a great. Every song is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You know, it's <laughs> I don't know. We're just flies. We're just like insects on this like screen trying to. <laughs> that's that's part of my whole thing is like like i don't care about that stuff anymore i did i was a victim of it my whole career yeah. you know i wanted to be a rock and roll star i wanted to you know just just have hit songs and tour and be like whatever and then mm -hmm. you know when it when it sort of fizzles out and and it doesn't work out anymore you know you, you, you get bitter sometimes you know mm -hmm. um but now like i said like i i couldn't be happier yeah. Like in my fantasy world, that's it. Like, <laughs> they were putting the like. This is the funniest thing about the paint fan. I think I told you before. So I I watched the video of Gene Simmons uh -huh. showing how to do the face paint on his daughter. He was doing the Gene he Simmons face <laughs> on his daughter with the paint, and he was showing how to do it. He's like, you get the Q-tips, and you do this or whatever, and she's just sitting there, and he does his face on her face. Why, why didn't he just tell himself? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair might enough. Might be a little bit weird saying that. Yeah. But, but it was, like, awesome, and I was like, okay, that's how to do it, you know? And uh, so, yeah, and I forget Put me back in my train of thought. Well, we're talking about the makeup and you don't know how to do that. About the makeup, you know, and it was a whole thing where I was just like, I just want to have fun and do it. Like I, I had suggested it to previous bands that I was in like, Hey man, let's do some kind of like crazy stage show. And yeah. every, but the problem is when you're young and you're good looking <laughs> and you know, people tend to use that as their uniform. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, like, you're young, you're good looking, like, oh, yeah, this is my whatever. But then you get these bands that, like, kind of figured it out right in the beginning. They're like, hey, man, it's got to be, like, almost like superhero stuff, you know? Like, yeah. we want to be more than just the music. We want to be, like, a whole stage show and a yeah. thing. And, and I always wanted to do that. I, You know, all the bands I was in never wanted to, like, you know, you can't be the only guy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I can relate to that completely. Always been into that. And yeah, as you say, Kiss just absolutely ah. killed it. They had they had the comic books and they had like Kiss everything, man. Everything. I mean, like you ever seen uh have you ever seen the Kiss Symphony? Uh is that when they played with a uh, orchestra? Yeah, and everybody in the orchestra are wearing kiss faces. <laughs> yeah, man, it's because like, it's the it's brand, you know? Like, they were just such a powerhouse. Like, I can't remember now, but I remember watching a documentary one time, and they were speaking, like, they were literally just speaking business. Um, like, the manager, and, like, he was on some finance, like, show. <laughs> And okay. they were talking about how much money Kiss was making, and it was just like it was unbelievable. Imagine like, how long it took to get all those people into makeup. 
the thing the thing that killed me was I was watching it and Gene Simmons was talking about how those guys didn't have makeup artists when they started. Like they were just yeah, a band themselves. of four guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every night they would put on their makeup by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said it took us like an hour, hour and a half, which is about what it does take, pretty much. I think and he was I, like I remember I think I saw a documentary where it was even more recent and he was still doing his own makeup, Gene Simmons. Oh yeah, maybe. I think, but the, the yeah. thing that interest the thing that got me the most was that he talked about remember he had the ponytail on top of his head? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because they didn't know about putting the powder on the makeup to dry it out. Otherwise right. it cracks and it, it looks really bad. And I don't even know. I, I'm not a makeup artist. I Obviously, just did this yeah, myself. Yeah. But he used to put his ponytail up he, up on top of his head because by the end of the show, the makeup would be fucking oh, like yeah, dripping. Down, and the yeah. hair and his hair would be sticking to his face. <laughs> oh man. So he was like, You need the the powder. You yeah, gotta yeah. you gotta put that on. To make it all stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. Definitely and need that. Just, it must be so hot as well, like and all the crazy costumes, like the oh, the like massive heels, platform boots. The heels are the best. Like, I mean it's amazing, <laughs> but geez, what yeah, as you say, so so much work goes into that, man. You know, like, it amazes me. We're KISS fans all over the world, bro. <laughs> oh man. It was it's yeah, that was it was something else, man. Like and that's the thing is you can people can say whatever they want about Kiss and you can compare them to all the other great rock bands and whatever, but like yeah, they were they were like probably making more money than pretty much all the other bands put together. <laughs> so we were talking about Ozone before, right? Yeah, off the podcast and, we were and yeah. so so one of my big references, I have two major references that I use with the Ozone uh, mastering. Yeah. One of them is Out on the Tiles by Led Zeppelin, oh, off yeah. of Led Zeppelin 3, right? Uh-huh. The other one is Detroit Rock City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fantastic album. And I mean, uh, yeah, those, I mean, that one is probably the most classic, isn't it? I, I don't know. That, you know, and, and that's the thing. Like, like a guy your age, you're a lot younger than I am. You still love that. Like, that's how classic yeah. these guys are. They they appeal yeah, yeah, yeah. to anybody who likes rock and roll. I must know? admit, like, I, I always I always liked Kiss. I always admired them. Like, the songs I knew, I liked. But then, like, they, they're such a, like, almost, like, household name in that way that it was always kind of like, uh, you know, and people kind of knock them. Um, and whatever and and at one point like later on especially seeing it more as like a case study for a band that's done really well with incorporating characters and performance and things like that so i decided to really kind of go in on them and like yeah man i just it's just so good like their entire discography man and like and everything that they've done and the things that they managed to achieve as a band like it's incredible man like it's incredible and I must admit, like I, I just was like definitely converted Kiss Army <laughs> from that point on. You know, like incredible. Another group of New Yorkers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I even love. I mean, I like how the sound changed, and people like like this record at the time, and they didn't like this record. But in hindsight, it all just tells like a really great story. You know, like they have like. Uh, Eldar or whatever, where they started doing some like prog rock kind of, you know, rock opera type thing, and everyone's like, "What the hell is Kiss doing?" But you know, it's no, still they... it's still so cool that Kiss did that, you know. And, and then like the even in the nineties when everything like, you know, went much darker and heavier, like Revenge, man, that album is amazing, so good. It sounds incredible, like. Yeah, as the production got better, it the was the production. Uh, just, wow, sounds massive, man. You know, the thing about Kiss is that every guy in the band was a great singer. It certainly helped. Maybe Gene yeah, Simmons yeah. wasn't a great singer, but he had his he part. Had, they have character for sure. Yeah, they man. had a character they all, part. They all, but they all sing with character. Like Gene Simmons, as you say, he just like yeah, not about being a great singer, but he just had that lower gravelly voice that just like yeah oozed like uh yeah 
Charisma. Dex <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Peter Chris was a he sang Black Diamond. He sang a yeah, bunch yeah, of great yeah. songs. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. He added a whole and, other thing, you know. Like sometimes he's sounding almost like Rod Stewart, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, and that's a good point that you bring up. You know, because that goes back to like what are the you know influences of the bands. Mm-hmm. But how far back do you go? You know. Sure. Yeah. You know, like I've been listening to a lot of classical music lately. Nice. As I'm driving in my car, and I'm like, I'm listening to serial killer music. <laughs> Because every every freaking like like Silence of the Lambs, he's like, yes, Clary. You see, he's in like this like mansion. He's listening to like this classical music. It's like every every horror movie. They're like the killer is like all like elegant, listening to class. And I'm like, this is serial killer music. I mean, I don't know about you, but that image certainly appeals to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big classical fan. I, I've always yeah. been like a classical guy. That's cool. Uh, what what kind of what is there any particular favorite? Just 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 the whole vibe of it, you know. Yeah. Like like the best scene in in Spinal Tap is when uh, Nigel's like, "Yeah, I'm doing like uh, some sort of like a trilogy here," and he's like, "It's in uh, D minor." Yeah, the, saddest of all keys. Saddest and he's like, of all keys. <laughs> like it's the saddest of all keys. He goes, "What?" Well, he goes, "I'm sort of like into Mozart and Bach." So I'm sort of in the middle, and it's like a mock piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was so classic. He's like, well, what do you call it? He's like, I, uh, I call it Lick My Love Pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. I mean, like Steel Panther, you know, Spinal Tap. It's yeah, just right. another key cornerstone of what's as good as, like, make great music that's fun, but, like, doesn't take itself too seriously. And like everybody loves Spinal Tap, right? Even from within, it's a cra- dude. Maybe some people you, didn't have a sense of humor, but like well, most let me tell you people. Because I'm old enough to tell you that me and my buddies went and saw that in the movie theater when it came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were so, um, whatever that we didn't realize. Like we we were trying to figure out, like, is this a real band? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. is this? Well, like, they is had this songs, a... didn't they? So yeah, hey, yo, big bottoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the whole the whole thing was so amazing, and um, you know, and basically what they did was they uh, ba- they basically encapsulated a bunch of real world touring bands things that happened, like when they go through yeah. the metal detectors, and they got the, he's got the zucchini and the tin foil in his pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're like doing waving the wand, and like, and when they get caught in the pods, yeah. that was like a Dio thing, I think. That was a Dio I, show. I know the the, got, I, the Stonehenge came from Sabbath, I think, didn't it? Oh, that's just the best. <laughs> well, they're like, they're like these little. They were being, they were in danger of being. What does he say? I don't even remember. It's yeah. like they were in danger of being trampled. <laughs> yeah, dude, have you seen the latest Jeff Beck memes? I don't think so. Uh, I'm going to have to send you some. Yeah, totally, man. So, character of Nigel Mm -hmm. was built off of Jeff Beck. Right, okay. So now people are putting out this Jeff Beck videos where you would swear it's Nigel Tufnell. Right, I see. It is so, and it's it's funny and hurtful at the same time. (laughs) Because Jeff Beck's one of my biggest rock star like heroes of all time yeah and now i have to think of him as nigel tufnell <laughs> i don't um, like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i'm against it <laughs> sounds funny though i'm up for some memes <laughs> oh i'm gonna send you the link so you're gonna laugh your ass off because oh, and yeah. people in the comments it's it's incredible because they're like oh, yeah. oh my god That's i so... never realized that jeff beck is nigel tufnell <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, uh, this will double the volume. You you press on this, it'll yes, it'll <laughs> just wonderful, perfect. Oh my god! <laughs> but, uh, I've, I've I literally have only just clocked the time because it's absolutely flown flown by, man. I've already what's been, that? I've I've just clocked the time, man. It's absolutely flown by. I can't believe how uh, how quick it's gone. We've been speaking already for for a good while, man. I feel like we could, we I could just hang out all night. 
chatting. <laughs> we get some drugs stuff, and some girls, we'd be fine. <laughs> oh, you're married, on, right? On, yeah, on Zoom. Like maybe we can get them floating around outside your spaceship <laughs> or something. <laughs> Intergalactic hookers. Oh yeah, that's it. I love don't it don't 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 print that. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. So, like, I suppose, like, I suppose we're gonna have to sort of look, look to wrap it up. But is there anything in particular you want to get in there before we do? No, nah, not really. I mean, we, we pretty much covered. Let me let me look. I got my notes. Let me look. Cool, man. Go for it. Um. No, I mean, that's that's pretty much it, man. I mean, there's not much more to talk about. It's about having fun, knowing who you are, and being able to play music that you want to listen to and not be not be influenced by other people telling you it's not good. And then you go, oh, it's not good. Well, I'll change it for you. <laughs> Like that's yeah. the biggest problem in this in this world, and and when I say that, it's it's not on a level of of of, of maybe your friends, but put it on a level of like you're in a band, play these songs, you get a record deal, you go into a studio, and this like producer guy is going, yeah, this is okay, but you want to change this, you want to do that, and next thing you know, by the time you're done, you're you're like men at work, mm -hmm. instead of Ozzy. You know, like you, you're just some, a totally different band and bands put up with this crap because the record companies are like saying, Hey man, we'll pay you to do this. So we're or not even paying you anymore. Really? They're just <laughs> oh, yeah. like giving you the promise of payment, yeah, you yeah. know? And it's like, listen, if I can say any one thing in summary, go down swinging and go down with your best pitch. It's a baseball term. You guys aren't like into baseball, right? <laughs> Not in the UK, but I'm sure that people, <laughs> people can cotton on. So in baseball, like a pitcher will throw a pitch and the catcher will tell him like kind of what pitch to throw. And sometimes the, the pitcher goes, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to throw that pitch. I'm going to throw my best pitch. Yeah. Nice. So what happens is that the, 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 the pitcher throws his best pitch and the hitter knocks a home run and wins the game and he loses. But you know what? He lost on his best pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Like, like, it, like if, if the catcher signals for a change up or some weird thing and he throws it and gets it, it gets hit out of the park. Now he has that like, um, sort of, um, regret that he didn't throw his best pitch. So you know what? If you go out with your best pitch, you can go out knowing you did your best. That's kind of the philosophy behind that statement. I love that. Does man. that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense, dude. I think that's really You know, cool. I'd rather fail as myself than win as somebody else. You know? I'm with you, man. I'm with it's you. It's just the and way I mean, it is, man. You know, you get to do it in a flying V spaceship, chasing down disco balls, cranking heavy metal. I wish metal. I could get that disco ball to fly across <laughs> the screen right now yeah. and blow it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just got on the back. Hey, but you know what? I'm, you know, tell me when you're gonna put the um this out. I want to give a link to my boy Juan, who did the animation. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. he's on Instagram. He's a cool dude, man. Really cool dude. Cool. And yeah, uh, yeah. nice. So nice, yeah, man. that's uh, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, uh, I'll send you some shit. Uh, I gotta stop. You know, it's hard. You don't, to... you don't have to worry, man. This says it's all good. Speak freely. No, but I don't. I don't want it to be public anyway. Like it's not cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> fair is, fair is. You know, we talk this way amongst ourselves, but in public, it's got to be sort of, you know, some more, civilized. Some more, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll send you some stuff, man. I, like I said, I got a whole new album that I'm working on, and and don't know how to promote it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's cool, I don't man. really. I don't. I don't know what to do. Like, yeah, uh, we talked about the Axe Heart guy that uh, or girl. I don't. I don't know who they are. Um, <laughs> and they said, "Yes, yeah, send me a video." But now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, if I do a video, I'm giving them raw video of me prior to it being, you know, yeah, converted yeah, yeah. into the thing. I don't know. It's kind of like, did you ever hear the um, Paul, Mac the Paul McCartney? Uh, uh, recordings where his wife they they isolated her uh no i don't think i heard so they isolated his wife's vocals they were terrible <laughs> it was it was absolutely horrible 
and they put that stuff on the internet, you know? Yeah, so it's yeah. tough, you know, because when you, when you send people stuff on the internet, you yeah. always have to like come to terms with, they might put that out there. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Or some, something might, yeah, it's on, it's on record <laughs> somewhere. And it's on record. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you, man. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Like it's really hey, man, it's cool talking to you, pleasure. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of fun, man. You got a lot of really cool stories. I've loved hearing your take on things, man. And and I love what you're doing with the project. I love the music. I love all the visuals and 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 the stories. So I'm I'm really stoked, man, to keep chatting more, hanging out, and and seeing what's next for you, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, man. And until next time. Do, brother. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of creating a universe a special thanks to spike for joining me i had a lot of fun on this one be sure to check out spike's links at linktr.ee forward slash spikes guitar camp links will be in the show notes that's all for this one i'll see you next time <laughs>